context, especially at home, I want to be able to set the tone and roll my quarterback out there, Sean Goldridge. See the numbers there? Very impressive numbers. 69% uh, to open up the season. That's not too shabby. That's and a good start. giving a little fist bump to the ref, working the ref already. That's what good quarterbacks are supposed to do. Goldrich opened up with uh, trips to the bottom of your screen. First play of the ball game. Both teams looking for that first victory. Goes to the top of your screen, swings it out to Storetti. And Storetti's up near the 30-yard line. He's pushed out of bounds. Like these uniforms from UNH today, the white bottoms, you could see the lower trunk on Nico Storetti right there. And you take a look at the, uh, the offensive lineup. Uh, you look at uh, Mike Kosha at center. He had 30 consecutive starts last year before a shoulder injury sidelined him. Last play, you picked up six on the play, so it's second and four. Storetti, and he's dragged down after picking up the first down. Basic New Hampshire football right there, Mike. Little inside zone read. They'll take you inside, they'll take you outside. And between the kick return, a catch, and a rush, Storetti already into this game. Storetti with 1,028 yards last season in the opener against Toledo, 0.9 yards a carry. That uh, had been a long two weeks getting ready for this game. No doubt. Ready again with the call. He's up over the 30 and crosses the 40 yard line close to get another first down. So the Wildcats are on the move and they're opening possession. So let's take the uh, look at the offensive lineup once again. Mike Kosha up front. Uh, he had 30 consecutive starts. Kosha's a senior, as is Rob Bowman, who was right tackle last year. And now he's over at the, the left side. We'll talk more about that. Storetti with 1,028 yards rushing last year. RJ Harris with nine catches in the opener against Toledo for 149 yards. Goldrich goes upstairs, and Harris had it, dropped it a little bit high, and this one is picked off. That's a Stephen Wilmington, the senior from Ravina, Ohio. And Mike, a part of my game plan for New Hampshire was how will the Lehigh safeties respond? Wilmington and Lambert, new starters, not a ton of playing time. How will they deal with the zone read? You see Goldrich right here, ball just sails on him a little bit, tries to go up and make a play. Wilmington right there to make the interception. Good job by these safeties. I didn't think they were that bad last week. I know the Lehigh defense gave up a ton of yards, but you talk about momentum and taking the life out of this crowd here at Cal Stadium, an interception, and now you're in plus territory. That'll do it. Ball on the 44-yard line, first play from scrimmage uh, for the Mountain Hawks, and uh, the quarterback keeps it. Uh, that's Nick Shepniski. Shepniski uh, closed out the season last year, Rookie of the Week in the Patriot League, two of the final three weeks. And then lo and behold, he was named the Offensive Player of the Week in the Patriot League after that loss to James Madison as we take a look at his rushing numbers in that first game. Mentioned in the open, he completed passes to eight different receivers. That helps you get 6.4 yards a run because you just don't know where the ball's gonna go, maybe in his hands. Out of the gun, Shafniski rolls to his right, has his man, that's the big fullback. And he's down near the 35 uh, yard line. That's Evan Kaufman, the sophomore from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I love fullbacks. They don't get enough run. They're like offensive linemen, Mike. You know what they do? They're there to be the meat. They're there to run people over. They're there to catch the ball every once in a while. But if you've got a good one, you could throw it to them, and they know what to do with it, just like Kaufman did right there. Kaufman had one catch last week. And it's third and one. And there's some Whoa. movement up front. Uh, that was number uh, 44, Tyler Coyle, the senior tight end out of West Milford, New Jersey. Tony Marcella is our referee this afternoon. and uh, bites him in the butt there. First down on the 30, play action, and he's going down. There's the first sack of either team this year. And breaking in is a Brian Sacconi, the senior from Manchester, Massachusetts. And Mike Sacconi, a guy who started here as a defensive end, he then switched over to offense and played a little bit of tight end. And last year, because of the emergence of tight end Harold Spears, they were able to put Sacconi back at the defensive end spot. He's 6'3", he's 253. I think he plays with really good strength. Did a nice job, showed some athleticism there. This team had 43 sacks last year, no sacks against Toledo. That did not sit well with any of the coaches. 
So now it's second and 20, and quarterback draw. He has nowhere to go, just inside of the 40, down to about the 38-yard line. Making the initial stop. As you take a look at the uh, offense now for Lehigh, Shefniski, only a sophomore from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. The running backs are Brandon Yosha, the sophomore, the Miami transfer, and he and Rich Sodake will split time. The number one receiver, Josh Paris, had four catches last week, but he's uh, filling in for Lee Kerfus, who had 99 catches last year, and of course he's graduated and moved on. Third down and 18, the ball on the 38. Shefniski. This one's complete down inside the 30 yard line. He's wrestled down. The ball is loose on the carpet. That was Paris on the receiving end. It was at the 28 yard line and the Wildcats say they have it and they do. Little sloppiness early here, Mike. You're just looking for the opportunity to maybe get the ball around the 30 yard line, possibly give yourself a chance to kick a field goal and instead it's a turnover. 11.04 to go in the opening quarter. When we come back, the Wildcats will have the football for the second time. The best 60 minutes of football taking place on Saturday. Back in New Hampshire, uh, each team uh, trading off the turnovers, Andy. Yeah, a tipped ball for an interception, and then we're going to see the completion here. Shifniski with a little bit of people around him. He gets it out to Josh Paris, and then, wow, what a really nice job. Hayden Knudsen, who plays the whip safety in this New Hampshire defense. He's part linebacker, part safety, has the ability to play in space. Good form tackle right there. Hand on the football while making that stick. Defensive end, uh, Cody Mueller. Credited with the uh, fumble recovery. So now the Wildcats with their second possession now. The ball on the 29 yard line. And they're going to keep it. Goldwich up over the uh, 35 to about the 38 yard line on the quarterback keeper. Nice job there. They're lining up the tight end who I referenced earlier, Harold Spears in the backfield, a 6'4, 255 pound senior. New Hampshire loads up and plays fast. He can catch it, but a good job there as a blocker. You talk about uh, Lehigh's quarterback rushing the football. Goldrich last year rushed for 654 yards, but unfortunately, you add in the sacks, and that dropped it down to the 400 range. Goldrich goes upstairs, and uh, this one's incomplete. The intended receiver was Jared Allison, who picked up uh, seven catches in the opener. Mike, I know in college football, some teams have gone the way of we're going to rotate quarterbacks. Some do it by quarter, by possession, or it's a certain package. Here at New Hampshire, they've got two guys who are quality quarterbacks. Andy Valis, the backup, the senior, but Sean Goldrich really came on last year, established himself as the guy to go to for Sean McDonald. Goldrich again, quarterback draw. Finds an opening up over the 45 yard line and that's going to be a first down for the Cats as they near the midfield strike. 
And I and I know it doesn't seem like much, but between Valus and Goldrich, there's about a 15-pound difference. And you see, look at the movement from Mike Kosha, the center, just getting people out of the way. And then I think Goldrich, a little better for those inside runs with that extra 15 pounds. Goldrich wants to go back upstairs. And this one is uh, up in the air for grabs again. Ball's incomplete this time. The intended receiver that time was Jimmy Giansanti. As an offensive lineman, you don't look at a quarterback's mechanics very much. That's where I'm at. And I don't think it's a mechanical issue, but it's now three throws from Goldrich where the ball is sailing and heading up on him a little bit. It's not a real windy day here in Durham. They got to get this fixed because all the balls are sailing. It's been two weeks. You think they're pressing a little bit early? I just think he's, it, that could be the old, uh, hey, I'm going to throw it into the third row because I'm going to, you know, you'll throw it through the wall. Just. Be with, play within yourself. Look, New Hampshire went to the national semifinals last year where Goldrich was a big part of it. He's been in a big spot. They went out to North Dakota State who ultimately won the national championship. Again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th this situation should not overwhelm him other than maybe being amped up. Just take your time, deliver the ball. Guys have been open. He's just got to make the connection. Now the third down, they were 10 of 17 and that lost to Toledo on third down, so they were very productive in that category. This one's over the middle, and it's complete. Dragged down inside the 15-yard line. That's Keon Taylor, his third catch this year. And that one goes for a big, big gainer. Well, you see that Goldrich puts it right on Taylor. You take a look at the, at the route that he runs on the outside. They do the clear out on the inside, in cut, and you can see the safety 27, Laquan Lambert, gets caught up inside a little bit, gets that in cut, is able to get a massive gain. Ball on the 14-yard line. And this is what New Hampshire will do, Mike. They'll rush you up to the line of scrimmage, they'll force you to a line, and then they'll check on what play they want to run. And I think we just got a false start out of this. As far as penalties. False start. They had seven in that opening Offense. game. Offense. Five yards. First down. Seven in the opening game as far as the infractions. They only averaged 4.7 last year. But this one is inexcusable because it's on the offensive line where they normally get the call from the sidelines. Get up to the line of scrimmage, don't allow substitution. And then as an offensive lineman, you either got to be in the two-point stance or you got to get your butt down and then stay there. Can't pick your hand up off the ground. You were never guilty of that, huh? Back no, I led days. the conference in holding penalties in 1994, <laughs> and you can look that up. It is the truth. Goldrich takes off again, and he's dragged down from behind. Nice play by Noah Robb, one of the outside linebackers. He played inside last year. He's thrilled to be back on the outside this season. Well, good hustle on the outside there by Robb, 6'3", 210-pound junior, coming off the edge. Great job from the backside, containing some of the zone read. That's what you've got to do. You take some chances backside. I know New Hampshire's going to look at that and say, can we give them a similar look and come back around with him crashing down hard? Double wides. To the top of your screen, man in motion now. That's Harold Spears, the tight end. Goldrick swings it out to Scavetti. Scavetti still on his feet inside the 10-yard line. Finally coming over to make the stop it was number 31, the middle linebacker, Colton Caslow. And you see Steretti go right to the sidelines. Might have just tweaked a little something there on the juke move, but you see with Steretti, watch him get the hands up. He's ready for the ball. Good throw from Goldrich. He put it in a spot to where he can do something with it. And you see 89 once again, Harold Spears. If you forget about him in the red area, they can put it on him. But if you allow him, he will give extra effort to clear space for other people. Goldrich, little fairy pattern. Harris had it, and he couldn't hold on. Good defensive effort that time by Oliver Rigo, the sophomore from Hollywood, Florida. All players in the secondary for this Lehigh team are new starters. Four guys, Mike. Rigo, one of them. Good job on the battle right here. He never gives up. Ends up forcing Harris out of bounds. Good battle level right there from Rigo. And isn't that amazing? A, a group as successful as Lehigh. Two corners, two safeties. All new starters this year. Christian Breda, the junior from Needham, Mass. On for a 27-yard field goal. This is his first attempt this year. And they bobble the snap. Andy Valos, the former quarterback of this team, keeps it. He's down inside the five-yard line. And that's going to be a first and goal on the mishap. Boy, what a great job by Andy Valos. And like we talked about, New Hampshire, Mike, 
has two guys who are starting grade players at that position. Velas knows exactly what to do. Couldn't tell if it was the snap or the hold, but the bottom line is Velas does a good job. Yeah, that's a bad snap right there from Kosha. That ball's got to be over to where Velas can deal with the ball. Look at him and watch what he does right there. Got the ball up, looked like he was going to have a chance to throw it, and then he just tucked it and ran. That's a heads-up play by your holder. And Velas is going back out on the field right now, so both quarterbacks on the field, but there's going to be a timeout called with the ball resting uh, inside the five-yard line at about the four. Issues with the kicking game are nothing new to fans of the New Hampshire Wildcats. I've been here where they've missed three extra points. They've had extra points blocked. It's It's been a real bugaboo for Sean McDonald. They just haven't been able to tighten it up. Well, McDonald with 10 straight trips to the postseason, threatening now the ball at the four when we come back. I'm big into fantasy football. That's why I got DirecTV NFL Sunday Ticket. They've got a new channel that's fully dedicated to nothing but fantasy. It takes you player to player live, so you can see everything as it happens and watch your fantasy players rack up the points, which kind of gets me excited. Become the world's most powerful fan. Get the new Fantasy Zone channel with NFL Sunday Ticket, only on DirecTV. Andy, we talked about Nico Storetti, uh, 10 carries, just nine yards against Toledo, a thousand yard rusher. He's been waiting a long time, two weeks, and now he's banged up already. Yeah, on the play where he caught that little swing pass, a great job by Harold Spears blocking for him. We'll check it out right here. Goldrich puts it on him, and then on the juke right there, it looked like kind of stuck it in the ground. It's the left ankle. He hopped right up, ran right to the trainer. They're retaping him. I expect him to be back in the game. He's a tough cuss. Well, you know who's back in the game? Andy Bayless, number 14, is back in the game at quarterback, and Goldrich is also on the field. But Bayless keeps it, and there's some good popping of the pads down there as Bayless gets near the goal line at about the one-yard line. We saw number 10, uh, Tim Newton. Used to wear number 96, but uh, number 10 is the uh, number of his brother Colin wore when he played for Lehigh. Velas now out of the game, wide receiver in. Now they're going to spread him out. Jimmy Owens, the running back out wide, number 32. Owens in motion. Owens with the call, Owens with the touchdown. Well, good job by your big boys, Mike. Alex Morrow, Mike Kosha, 78, the captain along that offensive line, Rob Bowman, Tad McNeely, number 53. I know they had the false start penalty a little bit earlier, but a great job at the point of attack. Put Owens out wide, motion him in, easy handoff for the draw down the middle. And early on, they're gonna go for two, Andy Bayless. Bayless trying to turn the corner and just missed the tie line. Tie line. No, they're going to say he got it in. Broke the plane. Mikey reached right around as he was going out of bounds. It looked like he crossed the goal line. And when your kicking game has trouble, ah, go for two. What the heck? Sean <laughs> McDonald's done this for years. 
you know, you got to be able to trust your special teams. And if you can't trust the guy to snap, then you go for two. Well, they capitalized on the fumble recovery and the Wildcats strike first, and they go for the two-point conversion, but Jimmy Owens gets his first touchdown. They say to succeed in college, you need to take good notes, make new friends, manage your time, find a quiet place to study, and above all, sit in the front row. It's not what they say, it's what you do with it. Find your classroom at the University of New Hampshire, where education is more than a My favorite time is to be at the Rock on a Saturday when the Golden Eagles are playing because when the team comes out onto the field through all the smoke and all the music and things like that, that Hattiesburg's historic M.M. Roberts Stadium hosts Appalachian State and our ASN Game Day crew next Saturday night at 7 p.m. Check your local listings. Get caught buzz driving and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Don't worry. The 74 people will pick before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. College football on the American Sports Network is brought to you by CokeCareers.com. And back in New Hampshire, uh, Mike Gleason along with Andy Gresh, 6.23 to go in the opening quarter. Both teams looking for their first victory, and uh, the Wildcats strike first. Well, after a couple of turnovers, Mike, New Hampshire setting the tone, moving the ball down the field. They end up with the big in-cut that turned into the massive gain for Kion Taylor, and then a little bit to Nico Storetti in the passing game, mix in both quarterbacks. You had Andy Vela save the day and get you a first down on what would have been a botched field goal. And then it's Mike Kosha, the center, with a crushing block on the touchdown for Owens. And we're at 8 nothing. And Breda ready to kick off the deep men uh, for Lehigh. Brandon Leakes, the sophomore, along with Mike Anderson, also a sophomore out of Toledo, Ohio. And this one is going to be uh, Leakes. Uh, Leakes up over the 15. And he weaves his way through some traffic up over the uh, 20 at about the 23-yard line before he's smothered by a bunch of Wildcats. And that's where the Mountain Hawks will take over after a nice, uh, impressive 12-play, 71-yard drive by New Hampshire. Plus, it's nice to watch a game with a kickoff return that actually means something. 12-play, 71 yards, Owens on the two-yard run. Uh, honestly, I don't know what was the bigger play on that drive, the Taylor catch or Andy Valis, Shawnee on the spot, kind of saving the day after a bad snap from Mike Kosha. He then went made up for it by getting a little pancake block on that touchdown. But Andy Valis, the holder, didn't panic, knew exactly what to do. Great effort on the first down in that two-point conversion. It's always good to redeem yourself, huh? Absolutely, especially as a lineman. This drive starts on the 23-yard line, and Brandon Yosha, the Miami transfer, is up over the 30. Just had to get to the 33 for the uh, first down. Yosha, 6 feet, 190 pounds, sophomore out of Carmel, Indiana. Watch number six in white here as the ball goes to the outside. That's Stefan Sansone, a wide receiver, six foot 180. But what's he doing? Blocking. You need wide receivers to obviously catch the ball, but if you want to run in the zone read, 
your wide guys got to get their noses dirty. Yosha picked up nine on the play, so it's second down and one at the 32. They go upstairs, and it's complete to Paris. Paris gets the first down up to about the 39-yard line. Mike, for my money, Nick Schiffnisky, these those are his throws right there. Short to intermediate type stuff. Get the ball out quick. High, high completion percentage. Watch the timing on this. See how quick that ball's out? Rush is never going to get to you regardless of where it's coming from when the ball's out that fast. Only start last year. He beat Colgate. He was 11 of 21 for 134 and a couple of touchdowns. They expanded the playbook uh, this year, and he's up over the 45, and he said, you ask anything you want to know about this playbook, and I'll tell you. Well, that's great because Schiffnisky is only a sophomore, and this is his uh, yeah, this is his third career start today. He got the start in the opera opener, obviously, where he uh, produced a ton of yards, well over 300 combined, and he's off to a good start today. I think for him, get in rhythm in that passing game. See, three for three. Yards will come if your completion percentage is good. He was 19 of 32 for 214 last week through the air. Second and fourth, 45. Wow. Whew. Yosha goes down. He goes down in a hurry. Uh, busting through is Devon Chalette. 56 in blue right into your living room. Nobody touches him. Chalette. One of the guys replacing Matt Evans, who was one of the most productive players in FCS history at the linebacker spot. No one picked him up. Guard pulled. No one stepped up to him. Shalet just fires through. Only a sophomore. Another in the line of really good inside backers here at New Hampshire. Well, John Lyons, the defensive coordinator, said our safeties and linebackers have to play better this week, and uh, that's a good start for the linebacking crew. Shevneski. This one's complete again, and it's uh, wrapped up by number 23, Dougie Moss, the backup uh, cornerback. But the ball was uh, complete to Derek Knott, who had three catches last week in that loss. You know, it's amazing. Uh, Lehigh gave up over 600 yards of offense, and yet uh, they had a chance to tie that game with about 21 seconds. They go. did. In fact, it was a blocked field goal of Ryan Pandy. Would have been a 27-yarder to tie it. It gets blocked. A very disappointing way to end the game. Austin Devine on the punt. He'll be punting at about the 35-yard line. The left foot kicker. And it's uh, taken at the 19. That's a Nick Cifalo. He's up over the 25-yard line. You know, Devine put two Inside the five last week. We'll talk about that more when we come back. One was at the two, one was at the one. We'll wait till you find out what James Madison did after that. Ever imagine getting away from it all? Dreamed of sand between your toes? A place where the term all where the beach is just outside your window. Window shopping just steps away. And your worries miles away. A getaway that gets you closer to the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Discover Bay Creek. Nestled in Cape Charles on Virginia's eastern shore, Bay Creek offers signature golf private beaches, the new beach club fitness facility, world-class marina, and a sense of community that will soon have you calling this getaway home. Visit us online to explore the 10 uniquely crafted villages that make up Bay Creek. There's an option for every lifestyle, from low-maintenance townhomes, quiet, cottage-style estate opportunities, or to book your Bay Creek getaway today. Welcome home. Welcome to Bay Creek. An Elon education is about preparing students for a life of global citizenship. Of course, this is a place where you're going to come and earn a degree, but it's also a place that's going to get you to think very deeply 
about how you're going to use that degree to make the world a better place. You're watching the American Sports Network. And back to New Hampshire, you see number 43 there, Austin Devine. Before the break, I said he had two punts, one down to the one and one down to the two. Talking with Andy Cohen, he said, yeah, you might want to mention the fact that James Madison had a 98 and a 99-yard scoring drive, too. <laughs> hey, he did his job, did Devine. He is the reigning Patriot League Special Teams Player of the Week. He also ripped off a 51-yarder in that game against James Madison as well. He averaged a 45 and a half yards a punt on the opening Week, uh, which unfortunately they dropped the 31 28 ball game to James Madison. Wildcats ready to go back to work. Goldrich completes this one to uh, Harris. Harris up over the 35. I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, uh, Andy, that Harris needed only 74 yards to hit 3,000. When you get into the quick passing game, watch RJ Harris here on the outside. He drives back towards the ball, and when he does, he's able to run around the defender. Great work. That's understanding how to play the position there by Harris. Goldrich goes upstairs again. Harris is wrapped up immediately. Push back forward progress. What a good defensive play uh, that time by Brandon Leakes, the sophomore from Simpsonville, South Carolina. Well, you make a play like you just did there with Harris, so what do you do? Bring him up a little bit, paying a little more attention. He's able to jump that, but you see uh, R.J. Harris right there one of the best that New Hampshire has ever seen. As you mentioned, Mike, he's approaching 3,000 yards. He's got over 220 catches now. Guy's a real player. Goldrich leaves the pocket, keeps it himself over the 40, and he crosses the 45. Had to get to the 46 uh, for a first down. And it looks like it's going to be close, depending on the spot. They're going to give him the first down. Two wide receivers lined up to the right-hand side. You see they bring Tad McNeely around to give Goldrich a little protection there. He's got a chance to throw it, but he doesn't completely have the lane. So what does he do? Tucks it down, takes what's in front of him, gets a first down. Well, Ryan Cardi, the offensive coordinator, said he's a very cerebral quarterback. Had to get to the 46, went out of bounds at the 46. Goes upstairs. This one's complete. Harold Spears, touchdown! I know I've been pumping him up because I like the big tight ends who block, but can also make a play in space. They end up getting 82, Jimmy G and Santi to that side with Harold Spears, and it looks like it's just double go routes, and I think Spears either ran away from the defender, but it looked like 27, Laquan Lambert, the safety, Kind of just gave up on the play. Didn't see great effort chasing after him, but Spears gets lost in this offense because of guys like Sturetti and Harris, who are the big play guys. Christian Breda, the junior from Needham Mass, on for the point after. And he drills it right down the middle of the freeway. So 15 on the board for the Wildcats, and Harold Spears, the 6'4", 255-pound senior, Andy said, he lives in that Lehigh area. He's from Pennsylvania. So that loss last year really stung him. No doubt, and he's a very underrated player within this New Hampshire offense. And you can see a little delayed release right there. So what they do is they use Gene Santi as kind of a clear out, and then it's Harold Spears, one step two, then he goes. He runs by the safety, Lambert, wide open, easy throw on the touchdown there for Sean Goldrich. And you can see, you gotta keep the big fella happy. Hey, listen, you know, these tight ends, you gotta ask them to block as much as they're gonna catch the ball. Well, you want the big boy to keep blocking, you better feed him every once in a while. And a great route, great play design from this New Hampshire coaching staff. Well, the big boy uh, had four touchdown receptions last year, but the uh, long was 36. That one goes 53. He breezed down the field. I mean, he's 255 and looked like he was out for a jog on that play. So you look at the scoring drive, so they've gone 71 and now 74 yards uh, in just a buck 22. Still have a minute 48 to go, and it's 15 to nothing. Wildcats on top. Lehigh needs an answer, Mike, and even if it isn't points, a little bit of time of possession here. 
get it into the second quarter, give your defense a chance to make some adjustments. And the kick. This one's taken at the uh, two yard line and it's up over the 20, 25 again. It's number 26 with the return for Lehigh. And that's Brandon Leakes, the, uh, the cornerback. So college football fans, the American Sports Network is on Twitter. Go to hashtag live on ASN and keep up with all the action from tonight's game. And yeah, that's hashtag live on ASN, the American Sports Network, our teams, our network. Mike, let's see what Shifnisky can come up with here. Hasn't been rattled yet. Let's see if they start to huck it a little more, try to gain back some of this field position by throwing the rock. It looked like DeAndre wanted to come in on the corner blitz that time. He pulls back. Shifnisky completes this one again to Josh Paris. Paris is up over the 40-yard uh, line. That's going to be a first down on the first play from the scrimmage. What a nice job by Shifnisky there because Casey DeAndre tipped his hand a little bit. You saw him almost jump off sides, as you mentioned, slides back, knew the corner blitz was coming, had the ability to peek over there. He was on alert, ends up putting it on the wide receiver. Good job by the QB. So Paris with three catches already this afternoon. Ma now the ball on the 42-yard line. We'll keep this one on the ground. And uh, running hard was uh, Rich Shodake, who had 96 yards in that opener, but uh, he was banged around like a ping pong ball. Well, Shane McNeely, 51, one of those inside linebackers with Chalette in the middle. He ends up blowing up that play right up the middle, takes on the guard. Comes back, bottom of your screen, and great defensive play uh, coming up uh, very quickly. Is number 33, that's Keith Parkinson, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Another one of those linebackers that they mix in. He's the backup to Knudsen in that whip spot, but they've got to rotate these linebackers a little bit. When you play this fast a pace, you've got to be able to give guys a chance to come out of the game, catch their breath, get their wind a little bit. Plus, Parkinson has always been really solid in the minutes they've given him here. New Hampshire playing without uh, Akeel Anderson, who had 124 tackles last year, went out with a high ankle sprain against Toledo. And the uh, pocket collapses, and that's going to be the second sack of the afternoon for the Wildcats. So the Wildcats, who did not have a sack in that first game, gets their second. This one's Julian Turner, the junior from East Pittsburgh, PA. Well, Mike, this is a full defensive line sack, quite honestly, because you mentioned Cody Muller, 96. Look at him drive and get in there. They run the twist with Kaplan, and what happens? Shifnisky is forced to the side to where he's got to go near Armand and Ciccone, and they're there ready to tackle him. Well, so far, it's been all Wildcats on their home field. We played 15 minutes. Second quarter is coming up after this. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Come in for a tour today or visit them at university-edge.com. University Edge, what's your edge like? My bad. You know me, I'm zapping. You know what I mean?
Back at Cal Stadium here in Durham, New Hampshire. New Hampshire has a 15-0 lead on Lehigh. Total defensive line sack. Watch the left side right here. That's 96, Cody Muller, the captain. He splits what should be a double team block, forces him wide. Julian Turner, number 92, working on their captain on the offensive line, number 70, Ned Dariush. And you could see they end up swallowing Nick Shifniski practically whole. Good total rush by UNH on that play. And speaking of rush, uh, the Wildcats almost got a block punt, but Devine's punt uh, goes out of bounds at about the uh, 41 yard line, so good field position for the Cats. I know you focused on Austin Devine. He's a left-footed punter. <laughs> now, a lot of people look at Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots and say, really smart guy. Do you know for 13 years in a row, he's had a left-footed punter? Well, so I there's gotta be something in the football world about left-footed punters that the rest of us plebeians don't know about. I thought you were bringing it up because you knew I was a left-footed punter at one time. I did not. I know you're quite a runner. I'll tell you that. I heard some stories. <laughs> this one's complete and up over the 45. That's uh, number seven, uh, Jared Allison, his second catch of the afternoon. And it's going to be uh, second in about five uh, for the Cats. Allison, one of those quick twitch receivers, got the ability to make people miss in space. But did you see who was involved in that play again, Mike? Number 89, Harold Spears. They fed the big boy, now get his butt back blocking. He does a great job. Well, I told you that he was uh, stung by that loss last year. He had to go home and work out with some of these guys. Ooh, that's tough. And a uh, good pursuit uh, coming up is uh, jo uh, Cody Condus, uh, number 47 out of Westerville, Ohio. The same hometown as uh, Andy Katzenmore, former New England Patriot. Oh, very nice. That's right. Who had a great career at uh, at Ohio State, and is I know now working with uh, their athletic department at uh, at last check. But uh, I can understand that the whole hey, I got to go home and work out with these guys, and we lost. You don't want to hear about scoreboard for a whole summer. So the Cats facing another third down situation, a third and three this time. You know, we mentioned the fact that uh, they were 10 of 17, 59% of that opening game. Villanova at 62.9 is the only team better in the CAA. Again, the backside pursuit. Uh, again, it's Noah Robb, the former inside linebacker. That's the second time he's made that play. Yeah, unless this was a called play, he should have pulled it out because watch, 39 and 35 both commit. Even if 35, Matt Verdon redirects, he still has the ability to pitch it outside. So in the zone read, if that defensive end crashes down, quarterback's supposed to keep it and either run it himself or in that play, it would have been run the option. Yeah, I stand corrected. I gave the credit to 38, Noah Robb. It was 39, Pierce Rapante. Rapante, they expect big things out of that sophomore linebacker. Paris backs away from the ball. It takes a uh, New Hampshire bounce, and it's going to be down just inside the 10-yard line. I'm down at the 10-yard line. So the Mountain Hawks now 90 yards away, trying to get on the board. 13-13 to go here before halftime. They trail by 15. Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. Let's bring this sucker home, right? Don't be denied. Do not be denied. You can't mess with us when we that bad, baby. We bad! Okay. Oh, All we got. All we need. All we need. Dan McCarney's North Texas Mean Green continue their quest for another postseason appearance. Saturday against Nichols State. It's a 3.30 kick from Denton, and you can find it here on ASN. Oh, look, 
a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to Durham, New Hampshire. The Wildcats on top of Lehigh, 15 to nothing. The next Saturday on the American Sports Network, we have three games on tap at 3.30. Nichols State to visits North Texas. Then at 7, Appalachian State will take on Southern Miss out of Conference U.S. Charlotte. All times listed are Eastern, so make sure to check the local listings in your area. Mike, you were at Charlotte last week. If I'm not that's mistaken. right, the 49ers, uh, they're going to Conference USA next year, and that's just their third year of existence, so they got to stock those shells with some athletes. I was just going to say, quite a level jump. And Chifneski uh, on the carry on the first play of the second quarter for their uh, series, at least. Uh, Chifneski uh, throwing the football. Chifneski's six for six. It's a pretty good start for him as far as uh, finding his receivers. And, Mike, I think it's time to get Josh Paris, the wide receiver, number three, into this game. He's replacing the All-American Lee Kerfus, who set a school record with 99 receptions. He's got to see the rock. Picked up four on the play, second and six. This one's complete over the middle, and it's a good gainer uh, for the Mountain Hawks. That one's complete to uh, Derek Knotts, uh, the junior from Orlando, and that's his second catch today. We've referenced last year against New Hampshire, it was Knott who had that go-ahead touchdown early in the fourth quarter against UNH that sealed the deal for the Mountain Hawks. Ball on the 30 after they move the markers. Another first down uh, for the Mountain Hawks. Keep this one on the ground. And it's going to be Rich Shodake, the senior from Florham Park, New Jersey. Coach Cohen was saying he was happy to see him break free for 96 yards last week because he's shown flashes waiting his turn since his sophomore season. Well, when you send both inside linebackers, McNeely and Shalette, you're going to stop them in the middle. Up to the 35-yard uh, line. And again, uh, there you see number 51, Shane McNeely. You know, Akeel Anderson, 124 tackles. He had eight against Toledo when he went out in the third quarter. High ankle sprain. How long is that going to nag him? Yeah, I, uh, high ankle sprains are always tough. You would almost rather have a break than the sprain like that because it gets down to putting weight on that leg. Difficult to run, difficult to cut, difficult to do anything. And sadly, the only thing you can do is just sit and wait to get it right. Uh, the Wildcat defense. Uh, Creeping up. Stellar on third down, 0 for 3 Lehigh so far. Pocket collapses, and the quarterback has nowhere to go. And he's dropped at the 35. Again, number 51, and on the play, that's Shane McNeely, the senior from Whitehall. Mike, it's worth noting, it's more the right side of this Lehigh offensive line that is having some issues. Short 74, the center. Rugg, who is a fifth-year strong man, but on the right side, they also got rotating tackles. Nunes 77 was hurt. Duffy is a new starter. Got a couple new guys in there right now, having a difficult time adjusting to some of the seniority that is on that New Hampshire defensive line. Devine into punts. Zavallo standing back at his 25. And it takes a Lehigh bounce inside the 20. And it's going to roll out of bounds just shy of the 15 yard line. 10 minutes and 38 seconds to go. Both teams looking for that first victory in 2014. Right now, the Wildcats in their home opener, leading at 15 zip. They say to succeed in college, you need to take good notes, make new friends, manage your time. Find a quiet place to study. And above all, sit in the front row. It's not what they say, it's what you do with it. Find your classroom at the University of New Hampshire, where education is more than a matter of
Sean McDonnell in his 16th year as the head coach here at New Hampshire. 143 consecutive polls they've been ranked. That is unbelievable. Uh, it's ridiculous. Coach Mack has done such a great job, Mike. And, you know, I know they're building a new stadium here at the University of New Hampshire, and that got pushed through. But Coach Mack might be one of the rare coaches in the country, and I know you talked to him this week, and it's kind of like, hey, you know, we're getting a new facility, but, boy, I like this. I like the old-school feel that we have up here in Durham. And, by the way, the rain is starting to fall here at Cal Stadium. Now they don't call this plate this, the dungeon for nothing. More on that after this play as Goldrich goes upstairs now in the rain and it's complete at the 25 yard line and almost uh, breaking away as uh, Jimmy G and Santi. 25 uh, million dollar renovation. Is it an overhaul or renovation? Where would you go? With oh, that? no, no, no. It, it, is, it is a uh, it is an overhaul here at UNH for this building. Jimmy Owens is uh, tripped up a nice play coming in as Colton Caslow. Incidentally, uh, Nico Steretti talked about the fact that he only had nine yards carrying uh, two weeks ago. He's been waiting two weeks to get back on the field. He is questionable. I don't think we'll see him again if they keep playing. The way yeah, I mean, I, I said he's a tough cuss. I thought he might be back there. He's kind of down on the sidelines, just kind of hanging out right now. They do have Jimmy Owens, and I think if the game maybe, if, if UNH wasn't in such control, maybe we'd see him back in. They open their CAA slate at Richmond next week. Goldrich on third down, picks up the first down and then some. He's finally uh, tripped up by Oliver Rigo. But they moved the chains and Goldrich showing that he has some legs as well. He does. Uh, Goldie very underrated in terms of his ability to run. And when you get blocking on the outside from the senior Jimmy G and Santi as he did right there, it's a lot easier to get around that corner. Like we said earlier, same rules apply for UNH. Wide guys got a block to run it with the QB. Goldrich sets up a little bubble screen, and this is Harris spun down shy at the 35-yard line. We mentioned Sean McDonald and what he has built here at New Hampshire, and we will get to that, but you see a little look to the right, come back to the short screen, and you see R.J. Harris trying to put that foot around, get the spin move. To me, Coach Mack is about old-school principles. It's nothing more than... Run it, catch it, throw it, block it, kick it. They've had issues kicking it, but they're so good at the other stuff, they overcome it. <laughs> Giansante again for a first down, just shy of the 45-yard line. In coverage of Brandon Leakes, the sophomore from Simpsonville, South Carolina. But Goldrich really getting into a groove right now. Very much so, and it's interesting because as the rain comes down, they throw it a little bit more. Sean McDonald really understands his personnel inside and out. Gets him in early in games in their careers so you can see what they can do. Look at that effort by Jimmy Owens right there. And he's finally dragged down by uh, Pierce Rapanti, a sophomore linebacker from Wilmington, Delaware. You know, you talk about the dungeon and the uh, renovations or the, uh, the overhaul of the stadium. I mean, think about it. The last non-conference opponent to escape with a victory here, last non-conference regular season opponent, you have to go way back to 2000. Gardner cool. Webb. I mean, that's amazing. Goldrich, nice job reading his progressions. Little pump fake, and he's inside Lehigh territory. Just shy of the first down. I talked to Villanova coach Andy Talley last year, and he had coached up in the Adirondacks in the beginning of his career, and he said there's a similar feel. You're in the woods. You don't know much about New Hampshire. You come here. You're surrounded by beautiful nature, and it's the campus and the facility, and everything is on top of you. You kind of feel alone when you come into this stadium. And Lord knows at Rhode Island, we've come up here and been in rock fights with these guys <laughs> over the years back in the 90s. Goldrich takes off again, design plays inside the 40, finally dropped at the 35. And again, it's Oliver Rigo making the tackle, and Goldrich taking a page out of the, the opposing quarterback's uh, book right now. Shevnisky was the leading rusher last week for Lehigh, and right now, Goldrich sharing that on, or holding that honor for New Hampshire. Well, it's because his offensive line right now is dominating this Lehigh defensive front. Defensively, Lehigh just has no answers. Goldrich bobbled it, uh, comes back, and he still completes it inside the 30-yard uh, line. And that's Mike Kelly, the junior from Merrimack, New Hampshire. That's his first catch of the season. Tremendous analysis coming up right here, but they got him coming and going. They think it's going left, it's going right. They throw over the middle, they throw it into the flat. But it all starts with those big boys up front, led by their center, Mike Kosha. I know he isn't the captain. Rob Bowman, the tackle is. But Kosha has been a highly productive player here for years. 
Goldrich over the middle. It's uh, Gian Santi again, still on his feet, and he's dropped at the 15 yard line. I said Kelly had his first catch of the season, first catch of the afternoon, I should say. He had one in the opening game. Good pocket right here, set by the offensive line. Balls out quickly. You can see Goldrich getting the ball down now. Gian Santi on that in cut, put it right in a spot to where he could turn up the field and do something with it. Well, Coach McDonald, you're talking about the offensive uh, thrust down there in the trenches. Uh, he was, he said it was abysmal on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Usually they're a physical football team. They weren't that against Toledo. We'll get your thoughts on that when we come back. There's 7.09 to go before halftime. Cats are on the move. Lehigh trying to uh, defend. It's 15 nothing. Uh, we're going to hold off on that commercial break. So your thoughts on the physical play? So Here's what it is, is you move up a level. And yes, it's a MAC team in Toledo. And, and look, New Hampshire, like, like North Dakota State, they've had a good run against FBS teams. And in the second half, it started to get away from them a little bit. And they lost the battle along the offensive line. But why is New Hampshire so consistent? They've got the ability to have big people, but they find guys who can move. They're good in the interior. And like I, I made, I kind of made the joke about they got you coming and going, but it really is. It's left, it's right, it's short, it's long. They put two quarterbacks in the game. It's so much to prepare for. I think sometimes it's overwhelming trying to get ready for Sean McDonald and his crew. Well, the Wildcats in the red zone at the 15 yard line. There's a direct snap, and it's Harris weaving his way in for a score. Perfect example. Why give it to the quarterback and let him hand it off when you can put R.J. Harris in motion, direct snap it to him, and then get Kosha, the center, number 70 out there, where he really didn't hit anybody, but R.J. Harris just find a way to weave around him and get it in the end zone for the score. R.J. Harris, he had a touchdown last year carrying the ball, and uh, here's the first one in 2014. Look at Kosha, 70. Ham on a run. I pushed him in the hey, end zone. Illegal, there you go, it? right? That's illegal, isn't he, it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> well, sort of, kind of. And now they get the two-point conversion. <laughs> Again, it's it. I, I, I've made jokes before about New Hampshire. They're almost a point a minute, but they play so quick and so fast. They get lined up. They're so organized. They get you on plays like that. Well, the scoring drives have been impressive. The 71, 74, now 84 yards, 11 plays, 23 zip. Wildcats on top. minutes of football taking place on Saturday. My big idea is finding new drugs from the world's oceans. My big idea is harnessing green energy. To help 500 million smokers in the world to quit Smoking. To study ancient polar sediment to understand global climate change. To create an underwater NASA to explore the world's oceans. It's not happening in a big place. Beautiful. <laughs> in a small, beautiful place. Nearly 60 million Americans depend on free local TV. News, sports, weather emergencies, especially diverse communities, rural towns, the elderly. They save thousands every year on cable and satellite bills. Pay TV providers don't like that. They're pushing Washington to change the rules and cripple free TV. Call Congress. Tell them to stand up for 60 million Americans and stand up to pay TV providers. Don't mess with free TV. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Andy, New Hampshire, 37 yards rushing against the Toledo Rockets two weeks ago. They made sure they rectified that here this afternoon. Well, and it's a little bit of Goldrich, Jimmy Owens, Nico Stretti, and here R.J. Harris, direct snap to him. He's got a convoy to the end zone. You see only one Lehigh defender to that side of the field to try and make a play. 
11 plays, 84 yards. And right now, New Hampshire seems to be able to dial up anything they want, Mike, and find a way to move the football. Heck, they threw it a bunch of times. It just started raining here in Durham, but uh, it, it, it's a little bit of everything. This is what makes New Hampshire just so dadgum difficult to prepare for because they can hit you with the quick hitting plays, they can make big plays, or they can slow you down and beat you down on an 11-play drive. Breda with the kick. It's a low line drive hitting at the 15, and it's taken by Brandon Leaks. Leaks up over the uh, 20, close to the 25-yard line before he's smothered. Just inside seven minutes before halftime right now. You look at New Hampshire, they're averaging about 7.6 yards per play. Lehigh at 3.3. Yeah, right now, Lehigh can't get into any rhythm whatsoever. There's really no running lanes for Shifniski. I think some of the new starters on the offensive line, you know, 63, the left guard, Matt Ford, he's a new guy in there. So right now, the experience is kind of winning out. But what Lehigh needs here is some time of possession. They got to try to take care of their defense a little bit. Ball at the 26. Yosha gets the call and he's hit as soon as he turned the corner. And uh, coming up very quickly again, uh, Casey DeAndre, the cornerback. This young man had 69 tackles last year, three picks, and he broke up 20 passes. Uh, he's a very good player on the outside, but look at the linebacker string it out. And it looked like it was uh, Knudsen who came up there and got a stick in as well, 46. But Mike, when you're gonna stop the run, your corners have to be a part of it. Just like if you're gonna run it, your wide receivers have gotta be a part of your run game. And uh, this one's gonna be uh, complete over the 35. Now incomplete, the intended receiver was uh, Stefan Sansone. And uh, you're right, Knudsen made the defensive play, so I stand corrected. Knudsen coming back from a broken jaw. So he had to be, yeah. no pun intended, he had to be chomping at the bit to play some football. Oh, very nice right there. I like that. And, uh, yeah, Knudsen, uh, I, I, I like him. He's a, uh, he, he's a little fireball out there. Whenever you can uh, get him in space, gets a little tied up in blockers. That's where, he, that's where he runs into issues. Another third down, the Lehigh unsuccessful on third downs. Nice job by uh, the quarterback to evade the rush. He's up over the 45. Finally, it's... The cornerback, uh, Casey DeAndre, to make the tackle. It's going to be a first down, all done by Shefniski, the quarterback. Massive play from Shefniski right there because off the edge, like I said, Knudsen, get him in space. What did he do? He attacked the outer side of the quarterback. Watch him coming off the edge here. He's got to work a little more inside. Shefniski, a good stop of just kind of sliding up a little bit to where he couldn't get the smoke show shot on him. And then he's able to run around and get some all-important field position. Last week with the scramble, nice play on the left side, nice hole, I should say, and a good pickup by Brandon Yosha, who had 70 yards in his Lehigh debut. He went to Miami. He was one of the uh, top-ranked running backs in high school, had an injury, walked on at Miami anyway, and then decided to transfer here. And last week, he probably would have went over 100, but he cramped up a little bit in the first half. Right. He had a very productive day, uh, played six games at Miami as kind of a backup on special teams, but there's something there. Lehigh's got a good runner. Yosha again. He's going to pick up the first down. I believe they'll move the chains. Uh, Devon Chalette coming over to make the uh, tackle from the linebacker spot. You know, for the most part, though, John Lyons, the defensive coordinator, and he said, this week we have to limit big plays, force some turnovers, put some heat on the quarterback, and execute on third down. They pretty much. I did. They, they've pretty much done all that. I mean, uh, you know, big plays they come from turnovers, and Lehigh hasn't been able to really get any chunkers on them. But remember, it is early. Lehigh offensively, they're awfully good. If they get the O-line issues right, they'll be okay. Chineski right over the middle, and this one uh, sh should have been caught. The intended receiver was Derek Knott. It would have been his third catch. He hit him in the hands, and sometimes that's the worst place to hit a receiver. Yeah, exactly, because uh, they're thinking, oh, i got to make the great play. Hit him right there. I know there was a little bit of garbage in the middle of the field that might have changed the sight line a little bit, but if you're going to get into enemy territory and make something happen here this half, you've got to go make that catch. Nevertheless, a well-thrown ball from Shifniski. Second and 10 at the 48. Tight end Boyle in motion. And they run that way. Yosha inside New Hampshire territory before he's uh, dragged down. Again, uh, 51 and 92, uh, Julian Turner. 
along with the Shane McNeely on the defensive stop. New Hampshire, Mike, has finally gotten to the point to where they can really rotate some of those interior guys. And I know Rashid Armand, number 90, and 60, Matt Kaplan, a big body right there. Look at the big wide guy. I love those wide guys. But Julian Turner, nice rotational player inside, keeping all those guys fresh. I know it's 23 nothing, but uh, the Wildcats, in the back of their mind, they watched a lead dissipate last year to this Lehigh football team. Shepnisky, this one's complete. And the ball is loose. Uh, it's going to be a fumble, not an incomplete ball. Obviously, the ground cannot cause the fumble. They're going to call it incomplete. Yeah, it looked like the back judge came running in there and automatically ruled it incomplete. It looked like not gathered the ball. So they automatically rule it an incompletion, and you see not there on the ground. He is uh, he's hurt grabbing at that right knee, but it's bang bang. Let's take a look at the replay here and see if he makes the catch on the in cut. He's got the ball it's secured. I would say that it is a fumble, yes, because he tucks the ball, he makes a football move. You see him going across the field trying to get extra yardage and uh, looked like that one might have been a, a miss, but it's so quick and so over the middle, it's really tough. And we'll talk about replay or lack thereof when we come back, 23-0, Wildcats on top. Behold, we are in the presence of champions. Fantasy sports legends who have earned hundreds of thousands of dollars playing online. Meet Arlie Gonzalez. Average guy, superior sports knowledge. Picked a team in minutes and won enough to throw the party of a lifetime. In outer space. Former accountant Derek Bradley. DraftKings One Day Fantasy Football took him from a guy with holes in his underpants to a guy with bikini models in them. How do we turn our love of fantasy sports into reality cash? DraftKings.com. They have one day games, so you're not locked in. It's like a new season every time you play. And best of all, you could win a shipload of money. Get to DraftKings.com for giant one day cash prizes and massive weekly contests. Use promo code CAMP to play and get free entry in the $5 million week one kickoff bash September 7th. Get to DraftKings.com now. Get your you're not in here. Yes, I am. No, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Back in New Hampshire, 23 to nothing. Uh, New Hampshire on top, that's Derek Knott, the junior from Orlando, Florida, had three catches the first week. That would have been his third if they didn't rule this incomplete. You see them working on the right knee, and there's Matt Kaplan. He was over near the training table. Looked like he was kind of stretching out one of his legs a little bit. He's a New Hampshire boy, 6'1", 298, played stout in the middle so far. Safalo so standing back at the 10-yard line to receive the divine punt. And takes it at the nine, calls for the fair catch. And the catch will be 91 yards away. I think I might have let that one go because for me, I'm looking at trajectory of the football. When that thing starts to turn over, I know when the point is going to hit, you're thinking that it's automatically going to roll behind. I thought that punt turned over quite nicely. I might have let that thing go, see if it rolled into the end zone. But up 23 nothing. eh. I don't think you're going to sweat that right now, given the way this New Hampshire offense has been rolling. And Lehigh, that's probably the best drive we've seen them all afternoon, even though it ended in a, a punt. Sure. Well, I mean, got to make the catches. I mean, I know Derek not end up getting hurt. Might have been a fumble there, but got to catch the ball. Jimmy Owens gets the call. Nice hole again in that offensive line. And 
gets up over the 15 to about the 16 yard line. We mentioned the fact that I think you were right. If they had replay, I think that would have been ruled a fumble. Right, and it's difficult at the FCS level because not every game is on television. So how do you determine whether you do or don't have replay? Do you put cameras in? I think at the FBS level, much easier to implement replay where at the FCS level, it's it's a little schizophrenic as to which games are on TV, so it's not fair for everyone. Owens again breaks it up over the 30, 35, 40, and he's up over the 45-yard line. And he's going to have to leave uh, because his helmet came off, and it's going to be interesting to see who plays running back. Well, let's take a look. Good job by the offensive line right there. Jimmy Owens on the outside. R.J. Harris getting dirty with the block on Oliver Rigo. And you could see Owens get the shoulder square, get ahead of steam, and uh, get up the field. So he leaves after his helmet. He has to sit out one play. Storetti is out with a, uh, a foot injury. 48, Donald Goodrich in the tailback. So Goodrich uh, comes in for the one play anyway. This one's batted down to the line of scrimmage. And getting the bat, a uh, uh, big paw on the ball. It looked like uh, number 58. Would have been DJ Bourgeois. Owens back in now for New Hampshire. They've got him lined up out wide. Last time they did this where they lined it up out wide, Jimmy Owens came in motion, lined up, and they ran the draw. Second and 10 at the 47. Owens looking for a lane, and he's uh, drilled by number 31, Colton Caslow, the middle linebacker. Stephen Wilmington, the safety mic, number 13, also creeping up near the line of scrimmage. Like I mentioned, line him up out wide. They bring him back, get him set, run the draw. That was the play on the touchdown. This time, it's the jet sweep, but the safety 13, Wilmington, a part of that group. And you mentioned the tackler there. Multiple defensive players for Lehigh up around the line of scrimmage, sniffing that one out. Trips to the top of your screen on a third and eight. Goldrich goes to work near side. And no penalty flag drop. Finally, there's a penalty flag drop. Number 26 of Brandon Leakes was all over Keon Taylor. And it didn't look like there's going to be a flag at first. And the back judge finally threw it in. Uh, New Hampshire sideline lobbying for a flag. I thought he got the right arm around there to get the left one up to try to knock it away. Also a great job by Jimmy Owens, 32. Big block on the blitz in the center to give Sean Goldrich plenty of room to deliver that football. Pass interference, defense, number 26. 15 yards from the original line of scrimmage. First down. Let's take a look here. Yeah, you can see. There before the ball arrived from Leeds on RJ Harris. And look, I get it. I know what people were thinking at home. Come on, it wasn't that much contact. Do you really need to call that? Yeah, to the letter of the rule, that was pass interference, but. You know, a lot like quarterback hits, one of those things the fans got big opinions on. Yeah, I thought it impeded his progress, no doubt about that. Goldrich goes upstairs looking for Harris, and who attracts double coverage over there, and it falls incomplete. Well, Mike, right now, New Hampshire has got themselves in a position here. Second and 10, 238 to go. Ball's on the 36-yard line. They do have a couple of timeouts if necessary, but I know that that guy right there, Sean McDonald, we touched on it in the open, mic about how there's some hot fire being spit out of the mouths of some of these New Hampshire players. They're ready to rock. They want to beat this Lehigh team. They put it on them here in the first half. I'm sure they'd love to ring the bell and get it to 30 before half. <laughs> Well, that loss in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania last year certainly stung as they blew a lead in that game. Owens again down to about the 31-yard line. For New Hampshire, they do not love the little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> Bad memories for them, and it's showing in their play because they've gone out and dominated the line of scrimmage. Quarterback Sean Goldrick has been impressive, and Nico Storetti has been out. Jimmy Owens has played the majority of the snaps as long as the helmet buckles up. 
And they thought that uh, Dalton Crossan uh, might get some uh, playing time, but he's re-aggravated in a leg injury. And uh, Owens is doing a pretty good job himself, though, as he gets down near first down territory. Looks like he's going to move the chains with the first down as he gets to about the 25. Oh, we got the stoppage of clock here, Mike. We might get... Oh, they did move it. I thought we were going to get a measurement. I thought we were going to get to play the guessing game for the first time this year. But you nailed it, my friend. It is a first down. And now New Hampshire just bleeding the clock. And they dropped a flag. First down. Well, that's an interesting call at this juncture. Well, Sean McDonald, you see him rip off the headset there on the sideline. And the, he, yeah, he's giving it to somebody. He is not happy. Those are the kinds of things. It's like an offensive lineman putting his hand down. You're running the hurry up, and then you pick your hand up, and you get the false start. When it's issues of functionality, man, coaches hate those kind of mistakes. Ten first downs last week against Toledo. 15 already in the ball game. And Goldrich is going to run out of bounds. And he has drilled. And Lehigh was very, very close to an infraction right there as Goldrich was very close to the sidelines. Well, and, he got nailed. and Mike, at the end, Goldrich flips the ball out of bounds because he's outside the pocket. So if I'm not mistaken here, let's see where they mark it. He might have saved himself a yard or two because he kind of flipped it out of uh, out of bounds, but uh, a big hit. Hey, if I'm the Lehigh player, I'm croaking him too. Are you kidding me? I'm chasing him. He's near the sidelines. You know, and, and plus, too, if you're Lehigh, hey, I get a big hit on the quarterback. Those things might be cumulative. It might allow us to get something going. Moments ago, you talked about that upset last year in Bethlehem. And we talked about Harold Spears, how it stung him after this play. I'll talk about how many players were actually from that Pennsylvania Lehigh area. So they've been talking revenge for quite some time. Goldrich goes upstairs looking for what a grab. What a grab for a touchdown. Jimmy DeAnsanti. All goes right there, Mike. Throw it up, let him go make a play. When you're up 23-0, you've got the ability to do that. And Jimmy G and Santi working on the left side here. Goldrich just flips it up there. Look at G and Santi working on Oliver Rigo. Basically jumps right over him for the touchdown. You got a senior working on a junior who had his first start last week against James Madison out of corner. So Jimmy. Gian Sante, 31 catches last year. That one, probably his best of his career, and they missed the extra point. Now we know why Sean McDonald goes for two. You go for a field goal, and Andy Valis has got to save the day, and then you miss an extra point. Let's take a look at Gian Sante working on the outside here, as we mentioned, against Oliver Rigo. Here's your one-on-one -on -one battle. Just beats him on a go route to the outside. He's got the step on him. My friend, uh, Katri Ismail. If you got the step, it's the old, if you're even, you're leaving. But when you got the step, it gives the quarterback that extra little window to throw the ball. Good job on the redirect. Because he beats him off the line of scrimmage, Rigo's playing a little catch up right there. Perfectly thrown ball from Goldrich. The bad part is you miss the extra point. You don't ring the bell. You don't get the 30 before the end of the half. And, and the kick game issues are a problem. Mike, this New Hampshire team last year, they go to the national semifinals. This is a national championship caliber group. And when you win the conference, when you're one of the best teams in the CAA, you've got the chance to win the whole dang thing come tournament time. But New Hampshire will not win at all if they do not get this kicking game cleaned up. It's only September. It's got to become a priority for Sean McDonald. Oh, Breda filling the shoes of Mike MacArthur, who was 15 of 20 of field goals last year. So Breda is the new kicker. This is a uh, line drive kick taken by Leaks at the 20 yard line. And this will give Lehigh decent field position as he wiggles his way up near the 35. You know, you talk about the dungeon, and we mentioned the fact that you got to go way back to 2000, the last time a team escaped here, a non-conference team in the regular season. And you look at that, won 15 of the last 16, 25 of 27. Wow. 
And that non-conference loss, that was a playoff game in December of 2005. The regular season goes back to 2000. Yeah, they've been really good here for a lot of years, even going back to Coach Bowes when he was the head coach when I was playing up here. They won a lot of games. This is a tough place to come to. Good job of uh, sniffing out that little middle screen that time by the uh, New Hampshire defense. In 1995, my University of Rhode Island team came up here. We ended up 7-4 and four that year. We didn't make the postseason, but we came up here and won a rock fight. And I remember my offensive line mates and I, their D-line was pretty good, and they had a kid, Mike Foley, who ended up getting drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. We're like, oh, he might kill us. He didn't play that day, <laughs> and it helped us win like a 10-6 field goal contest. <laughs> Jadeski goes back upstairs. Puts this one on the money, and again, the ball is loose. It's going to be ruled incomplete. Paris had his hands on it, and again, if you're a receiver, you should hold on to that football. Uh, absolutely. you got to make those catches, and I don't know if the moisture outside, Mike, like the rain isn't coming down very hard, but it's drizzling enough to constantly make you wet, so it's probably as much annoying as it is anything else, but that ball gets slick quick. Double wides, top of your screen and the bottom of your screen with uh, 68 seconds to go before halftime. And this one's uh, thrown out of bounds. Again, a heavy rush by that Wildcat defense. At that time, it was Cody Mueller, one of the captains, uh, getting in there in a hurry. And uh, Shifniski just had to get rid of the football. Well, Mike, I want you to watch the footwork of the quarterback here. Watch. There's no step into the throw because of the pressure. He's got no room to step up into that thing, so it's a flat-footed throw. Part of the reason why it sailed on him and went out of the bounds. Great camera work right there, but good work by New Hampshire, not giving him room in the pocket. Well, the Cats with a chance with 63 seconds to go to put some more points on the board. Devine gets uh, rid of it to Cefalo. Again, lets it hit, and again, it takes a Lehigh bounce. Rolls all the way down to the 11-yard line, but Keep in mind, we talked about the fact that uh, this New Hampshire team has gone 71, 74, 81. That last drive, 90 yards. Boy, they're just churning it right now. Good job on third down. And I also think, Mike, that if we went back and really looked at it, what is the precursor to having success on third down, having success on first down? If you maintain good down and distance and you're getting yards on first down, instead of looking at second and eight where you got to call a play, big difference at second and five really opens up the playbook. And Sean McDonald and his crew do an outstanding job of play calling. Good point, John Lyons, the defensive coordinator, saying last year when they lost to Lehigh, Lehigh faced a lot of third down and shorts. And uh, they were moving the change that way. But the shoe's on the other foot, little reverse. There was the quarterback, we already saw him get the two point conversion. And he's all the way up to the 40 yard line before he's finally dragged down by Cody Condus. Andy Valis is a kid who plays quarterback, but he can run the ball pretty well. He had a big 74-yard touchdown run against Villanova last year, and it looked like they were going to run some option. And again, Valus with the flip back, but look at all the linemen downfield, including Jimmy G and Santee. Goldrich looks downfield, uh, cuts it up, and uh, he's in Lehigh territory. Runs out about the 47. And again, the Cats are on the move with 28 seconds to go. Well, now you're getting to the point to where you might actually be able to try a field goal here. And again, I know the New Hampshire kicking game, we've chronicled that here in this first half. 13 to 20, 192, two scores. Interception on the tip ball, but boy, overall, Sean Goldrich, Mike, has been really good today with a little bit of Andy Valis mixed in. And the 27 completions last week was a career high for Goldrich, who started eight times last year. This one's over the middle and it's dropped. It was thrown a little bit low. But again, probably a catchable ball. That's uh, Mike Detroit, the junior from uh, New Jersey. I know you got two timeouts here. Not the worst completion, quite honestly. You had two big plays. You get the ball to midfield. They run that shallow drag. Not a great throw from Goldrich right there, but everybody's gassed. Now gives you a 40 second play clock, gives you a chance to get in different personnel, gives you a chance to make a chunk play to where if you can get it to around the 20, might be able to kick a field goal here. Second and 10 from the 47, Goldrich. This one's complete down to the 40, had to get to the 37 for the first down. And uh, the ball was complete to finally to Harold Spears, the tight end, but uh, Goldrich doing a nice job of reading his progressions. So New Hampshire, we talked about the 143 consecutive polls they've been ranked in. 
This is the uh, top 25 FCS coaches poll. They come in at number nine. UNH started the year in both polls. Number four have slid down a little bit. And you know, in the first couple of weeks, you see these teams sort of fluctuate as they get their FBS opponent out of the way. You see it at the end of September, and you really start to find out who are the elite teams. Villanova will be elite New Hampshire. William & Mary's had a great defense. Don't forget about old Coach Cosgrove up in Maine, another guy like Sean McDonald here at UNH, where you're going up to the woods. Very tough place to play, and we see Richmond, that program on the rise once again. The CAA well represented in both of these FCS polls. A lot of talk about Chip Kelly, of course, used to coach here for uh, Coach uh, Mc McDonald, uh, Mike Tomlin of the Pittsburgh Steelers used to coach at uh, William & Mary. I actually ago. played against Mike Tomlin once upon a day. And Owens is wrapped up immediately by uh, Cody Condes. How did that go against Tomlin? Uh, well, he was a wide receiver and I was a fat old lineman, so I got to watch him do whatever. My matchup was more against those defensive guys, and they had some very good defensive players down there at William & Mary, but we could never go down there and win. Hey, I'll tell you. I got a quick story here. Okay. All right, so. I've got time. So, so as, as we wait here before we figure out what New Hampshire is going to do, we're nationally ranked in 1995. We're going to go down to play William & Mary. And for, for people who want to understand some of the budgetary constraints that some of these teams are under, we went down to play William & Mary. Now, we're in Kingston, Rhode Island, right? So Rhode Island ain't hard to find on the map. And you're going down to Williamsburg, Virginia. We practiced on a Thursday and then got 70 large humans on a bus, drove to Delaware, ate a late dinner, spent the night, got up, they had us work out in the parking lot. We did a walk through, right? Then we end up driving the rest of the day on Friday down to the uh, down to Williamsburg, stayed at a really nice hotel down there. They kind of took care of us from that end, but man, we we're dog tired. And that was a, I, th I think at the time we might've been number 19. and. Yeah, William & Mary was in the top 15, so it was a big game within the then Yankee Conference, which is now the CAA, but two days on a bus and go down and try to win a game, and then an all-nighter coming back. You said 70 large humans, so your so-called skilled position players were all Oh, we had big humans? people, yeah, right. we did. And, and if, if, if they weren't big, they smelled. <laughs> 10 seconds to go, Goldrich out of the shotgun, goes to work, Jimmy Owens. At the 25 with six seconds to go. And a good chance to at least give your field goal kicker a, a confidence boost by giving him a shot here. Well, Valus is coming into the game, and here comes the kicker as well. So they, they took the yardage. Mike, quite honestly, I thought with one more timeout, I know it's six seconds, you could run a quick hitting play, try to get a few more yards out of it, but Breda will try to knock down a long one here. Spotted at the 32, it's a 42-yard kick with six seconds to go. And the whistle blows, and Lehigh's gonna take a timeout. So they try to ice the kicker in a 29-0 game. You gotta keep coaching, and what the heck, you, you, the, 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 the timeouts don't carry over. So uh, if you're Andy Cohen and his staff, you might as well use them. And the rain has now picked up a little bit here. So interesting to watch the snap from Kosha, see if you get clean snap, clean spot. Mike, really the only negative for New Hampshire today has been on special teams. And it was Andy Valis, Johnny on the spot, who ended up picking up a bum snap and running for a first down that set up the touchdown. But you can see all the moisture here. And you can see the brand new lights here at New Hampshire. That's State. right. Years ago when I played here, we'd have been in the dark for crying out loud. <laughs> so Valus again uh, spotting it at the 32, a 42 yard kick for Christian Breda, the junior from Needham, Mass. Filling the shoes of Mike MacArthur. who has moved on after graduation. And the kick is up and it's uh, pulled to the left. And it's no good, but he had plenty of distance that time. He did, he pounded it, but I think getting a good snap a good spot and a kick away is a win in some respects for New Hampshire. Well, the bottom line, New Hampshire was not physical against Toledo. Your thoughts on the first? Well, they've dominated the line of scrimmage. You got to give the big boys led by Bowman and Kosha up front. Everyone has been involved in finding a way to score points and gain yards for New Hampshire. 401 yards already for the Wildcats. When we come back, we'll head for the ASN studio with Mick Schaefer for halftime.
This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Groundbreaking research. Nobel Prize winning faculty like the creator of the MRI. An historic $150 million donation. An Academy Award winner and a Grammy winner. Student athletes who have earned the nation's respect. Since ground was first broken in 1960, there have been a lot of firsts at Stony Brook University. Now we're waiting for you to make your mark. Are you a Seawolf? Mike, thanks very much. There's your score at halftime in Durham, New Hampshire, where the hometown Wildcats are playing for the first time this season. New Hampshire, by the way, with the nation's longest streak of top 25 appearances at 140 weeks. Dates back to September of 2004. The freshmen suiting up today, by the way, were eighth graders when it all began. Greetings and welcome to Halftime here on ASN. I am Mick Schaefer. Hope you're enjoying this Colonial Athletic Association broadcast. Six CAA teams ranked in this week's FCS polls. Coming up later on, we've got Conference USA action for you. From El Paso, it's been an all-regional non-conference slate for UTEP so far. New Mexico, Texas Tech, and now a date with New Mexico State. The Battle of I-10, they call it. 40 miles separate the two campuses. A rivalry so big, they play for two trophies. And then next week on ASN, it's another Saturday of Conference USA and CAA football. Southern Miss, North Texas, Charlotte, and Elon all in action. Stay with us. Halftime continues here on ASN. You're watching the American Sports Network, Sinclair Broadcast Group's Collegiate Sports Channel, the new home to Conference USA, the Colonial Athletic Association, Big South Conference, Southern Conference, and the Patriot League. In the coming months, watch your favorite college teams across ASN's network of channels throughout the United States. Touchdown. Tune in each Saturday for ASN's live college football coverage. Over 50 games this season. Witness spectacular touchdowns, crunching hits, and fist-pumping edge of your seat action that'll take your breath away. And later this fall, college basketball comes your way on ASN. Slam dunks, buzzer beaters, he fires it. Oh, he it. monster it block, three. Threes. Two more threes. Power to the yeah. Don't miss a minute of all the court storming action as teams battle for conference supremacy and invites to the NCAA tournament. The American Sports Network, your new home for live college sports. Oh. Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. 
auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Headed out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Nearly 60 million Americans depend on free local TV. News, sports, weather emergencies, especially diverse communities, rural towns, the elderly. They save thousands every year on cable and satellite bills. Pay TV providers don't like that. They're pushing Washington to change the rules and cripple free TV. Call Congress. Tell them to stand up for 60 million Americans and stand up to pay TV providers. Don't mess with free TV. About 8.30, I start up the rollers and, and I get them on. Coach Mack usually likes to be in about 9 o'clock, so we make sure we have a couple dogs on early for him. I don't eat breakfast. You know, uh, my breakfast is uh, three hot dogs from the, from the grills downstairs in the equipment room. As far as we know, it's about 40-plus years old. Uh, started by Jack French um, in the early 1970s. At 6'2", 250 pounds, New Hampshire defensive end Cody Muller has maybe snuck in a few of those hot dogs over his time there. A redshirt season, plus a medical redshirt season, means this is his sixth year with the Wildcats. Cody will turn 24 this fall. We let Cody tell you about Cody in this week's Who I Am. The biggest influence, I'd say, was probably my dad. He's a hardworking individual, chief of the SID unit in the state of New Jersey for you know 25 years and he was always working, he was always on call. He always made time for his family. Um, you know, he was always there for me. Football, you know, off the field, whatever it was in life. You know, I got my black belt when I was nine years old. And then my second degree when I was uh, 11 years old. They actually kind of had to bribe me to get into it. But once I did, you know, I fell in love with it. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you just gotta have that never give up attitude. But there was, you know, sparring in class, learning a new pattern, you know, anything it was, you always gotta had to, had to have that uh, perseverance. Broke uh, four boards one time with my hand. You know, I thought that was pretty cool when I was like nine years old. I actually wanna teach special ed. I was a history major in undergrad, and I'm doing a certificate in autism for grad school. Uh, you know, once I'm done, I'd like to coach high school football and probably teach uh, special ed. Speaking of who people are, they recently threw a mic on Lehigh Offensive Coordinator Drew Fulmer, and we got a sneak peek into the Mountain Hawks practice. What's up, Millsy? How we doing? What's up, Coach? How are you? Oh, living the dream, man. Jeez, Mary and Joseph. What is it with quarterbacks always wanting to catch one-handed? Because you're going to be too late if you try the three bigot on the jig. I don't know if that made any sense. You're freaking me out here, man. It's in your pocket. No, oh, thank you. No, I put it in here. Do you know who sings this song, Nick? Do you know who John Lennon is? You ever hear of the Doors? John Lennon was in the Beatles. Come on, come on, come on. Tempo, tempo. All right, let's get these guys out here. One out. Well, that's just practice. We'll get you back to the real thing momentarily here. Mike Gleason and Andy Gresh with the second half of Lehigh and New Hampshire right after this break. Coke Industries started in the heartland, and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. The best 60 minutes of football taking place on Saturday. for 
every budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered in stew. Buy me treats. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. My favorite time is to be at The Rock on a Saturday when the Golden Eagles are playing because when the team comes out onto the field through all the smoke and all the music and things like that, that is uh, the, the ultimate excitement. Hattiesburg's historic M.M. Roberts Stadium hosts Appalachian State and our ASN game day crew next Saturday night at 7 p.m. Check your local listing. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little. But things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching. So it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome back to the Dungeon in New Hampshire. There's the score after 30 minutes, 29 to nothing. The Wildcats on top of Lehigh. Mike Lee, along with Andy Gresh. And uh, Andy, I guess the coaches aren't the only ones that get hot dogs here. Brother, I'm double city. fisting it I because these things off. are good. Are they good? Oh, they're they're tremendous. Let's get through this so I can finish <laughs> these for crying out loud. Well, first, let's talk before we roll the highlights. Let's talk about the fact that they've been dominant uh, in the trenches. That's uh, something they did. They weren't against Toledo. They've got pressure on the Lehigh quarterback. Uh, he hasn't. Uh, inflicted too much damage and they said one of the biggest things was keep him in the pocket and don't let him get outside and they've done that well Mike I mean obviously Mike Kosha and his crew up front of the New Hampshire offensive line doing a tremendous job he had the big pancake block around the goal line New Hampshire's made some mistakes let's not act like they haven't played a completely clean game they've been able to overcome them and Mike when we get the stat sheet and you see you've got three guys in Goldrich Owens and Andy Valus thrown in there who've all been able to run for almost 150 yards just those three that's getting it done and you see, here's your play action right here. The delayed release from Harold Spears down the field. You see him running away from the safety. That ended up making it 15-0 on the 53-yard touchdown to the big boy on the outside. And then right here at the end of the half, total go route. Great job by Jimmy G and Santi working against Oliver Rigo. There's your touchdown that made it 29-0. And you see him, he gets the step on him. Great throw by Goldrich to the outside. Good redirect in the air from Gene Santi, and then gets the left arm down so the knee doesn't touch. He ends up getting into the end zone. Yeah, I was just going to say, not only a great catch, but a great job of finding the end zone. Uh, if he would have touched, it would have been down at about the one or two yard line. We still have 30 minutes to go, and there's uh, 401 yards of offense already. And Mike, one for seven on third down for Lehigh, not making the catches, not holding on to the football, not being able to convert on third down. It's just absolutely, if you say the story of the game, you can look at turnovers and all that, third down conversions. One team is churning, one team is stopping, and they're kind of stopping themselves at times. Well, the, the hot dogs go ahead, and you can eat it. I'll wrap things up here at halftime here can, on the ASN can I, can halftime report. I double report. fist these bad boys? <laughs> whatever, I mean, they're not the biggest things would like in the to world. Do. 37 yards rushing against the Toledo Rockets, 187 yards rushing in the first half for the Wildcats. And the second half is just around the corner. 21-0, Cats on top. They say to succeed in college, you need to take good notes, make new friends, <laughs> Find a quiet place to study. And above all, sit in the front row. It's not what they say, it's what you do with it. Find your classroom at the University of New Hampshire, where education is more than a matter of degree.
redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Yes, I am. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. And uh, back inside the dungeon, or Kyle Stadium here in New Hampshire, Mike Gleason along with Andy Gresh, the former Rhode Island Ram, or the Boston Radio personality, Boston Radio icon, I guess. Uh, we'll... Wow, that's, that, that's high praise. Thank you. Look at that guy. I mean, there you go. You want to see what it's like outside, snuggled up underneath a golf umbrella? You couldn't go out and, and hit any six irons or anything today. Well, you know, it's uh, turned into a perfect, uh, when we kicked off, it was a perfect football Saturday. Now it's a rainy Saturday afternoon here in New Hampshire. 88 yards of total offense for Lehigh. What do they have to do, uh, without being too obvious, to get this game well, going? Well, Mike, they got to catch it better. You know, whenever they've got a, a chance to make a play and catch the ball over the middle, uh, like Derek not had twice, you got to be able to hold on to the ball. You got to be able to make the catch. But, you know, as you say that, I'm looking at the numbers for the captain, Josh Parrish. And I see three catches for 28 yards, and there's Lehigh. Fumbled on the first drive, punted each drive since. So just no rhythm to the offense whatsoever. You've got to get your most productive players involved. They've got to find a way for Shifniski to get the ball to Josh Parrish on the outside. And if you can, what I call play the accordion, if you can get the ball to your guys outside, spread them out a little bit, then the run lanes for Yosha will open up. So you could, you could pack it in, you could spread them out, whatever. They got to get things working on the outside for that inside run game to get going. So if they can't establish Paris, I think it's going to be really hard for Lehigh to come back in this game. And by the way, Mike, now defensively, they've all but got to be perfect in the second half. You might be able to give up three, and Sean McDonald, he's up 29 nothing to look at him. Still not happy. Well, they've blown leads before. Well, and he knows that. He's also a very old school guy where he wants to see his team put together a full 60 minutes. And Mike, I think part of the narrative here, you mentioned it off the top. UNH had a bad taste in their mouth because of what happened last year with Lehigh. So they might look to kind of put the hammer to him a little bit. Well, Sean McDonald saying that uh, we blew the lead last year against a very good Toledo team. They were up 14 to three. Rockets really didn't take the, uh, the lead until what, 24 seconds to go in the half. And it was still a pretty good ball game with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. And Mike, as we saw, 10 straight postseason appearances for UNH. You need to win games like these against clubs that are favored to win their conference to get in. Well, Coach McDonald saying that to the last three or four times they uh, faced this Lehigh team. As Leach takes it, finds a wedge, finds a lane, and he spins up over the 30, 35, 40, 41 yard line. So a nice return. And this will give Lehigh probably their best starting field position. Now you got a little something here. And you're down 29 nothing. so what do you need? You need a play from a guy who can make one for you in Brandon Leakes. Here comes your spin move right here. Good job. Puts the foot in the ground. Gets himself an extra seven yards after the spin. If you're Lehigh, points are a must. If you want in this game, you've got to score here on this drive. Well, the ball at the 41-yard line, great field position. First play of the second half coming up right here for the Mountain Hawks. A tight end coil in motion. They go upstairs and coil the tight end. 
with a reception up over the 45 to about the 46. And uh, he is uh, wrestled down by Knudsen, who had six tackles in his uh, first game back from the broken jaw. Knudsen does a nice job of flying around, and uh, Tyler Coyle there. He only had a catch for 14 yards, but he's got six career touchdowns. Excuse me, one for 14 last week. Six in his career. You see Drew Fulmar right there calling the plays. Getting a tight end involved is always going to help occupy those linebackers. Picked up five on the play, so it's second and five of the 46. Yosha, nice lane, and he's inside Wildcat territory. That is something they did very little of in the first half. Very much so, Mike. When you only get, what was it, 86, 88 yards of offense there in the first half, yeah, you're not going to cross midfield very much, but running behind their big left tackle, number 70, Ned Daryush, he kicks out Brian Ciccone. Easy block for him. Big lane for Yosha to get up in there. All right. Now Lehigh's got something going. Let's avoid the big mistake here to get some points. You've got to be thinking from there, in. Third play of the drive. They're on the 44 of New Hampshire. Shadnisky wants to go down the middle, and this one is batted away at the last second. And it was a good play by number 16 there. That's uh, Sufalo. So, Mike, I just get done preaching about don't make the big mistake. And what does just Shifnisky do? He throws a quack quack up to the middle where there's two safeties around the football. Number one, the duck always gets you. You don't get the perfect spiral. There's not enough zip on the ball. That hurts. 8 of 14, 62 yards for Shifnisky, but he can't add an interception to his stats if they want to win. Yosha. Turns the corner, has some running room in the first down, and Yosha down to about the 32-yard line. So the uh, Miami transfer out of Indiana got the offense rolling right now. Before that last play, though, you saw Shevnitsky drying off that hand, so that ball obviously is causing some problems with throwing it. Yeah, and obviously it's getting slicker out there. Good job by Zach Duffy on the uh, seal there. And you see Yosha bounce around to the outside. Uh, Duffy, one of the new starters, big for a right tackle, 6'5", 3'10". Might be Darius's replacement. Shafnisky, yeah. right before the rush came in, right over the middle, and at uh, that time, I think Josh Paris probably heard some footsteps. Yeah, it's always dangerous catching the ball over the middle of the field, but if you're gonna be the captain, if you're gonna replace a record-setting receiver like he is in Lee Kerfis, who caught 99 a year ago, You've got to make those kinds of catches for Andy Cohen and his squad. And you can see the momentum building a little bit. And then what happened? You get past midfield, hey, you get an incompletion, you throw it up, some safeties getting hands on the ball, run around the right side, and then you don't make a play there. They got to keep it going. You mentioned Kerfus with 99, Spadola before Kerfus so play, played in the NFL. And Yosha out of Miami is off to the races, and Yosha, five, touchdown. First possession for Lehigh, they're finally on the board. Big drive right there. Now Lehigh's got a chance to really be in this game if their defense can start to hold. Right in the middle, good job on the play fake. Nice job by number 79, the senior right guard, Shane Rugg. He's one of the strongest players on the team. You saw it right there in the redirect. That was upper body. Muscle just turning him with the left hand to be able to wall it off for Yosha to go make a play. There's Ryan Pandy, the sophomore from Clearwater, Florida. On for the extra point. And you hit the nail on top of the head there, Andy, because uh, Safola was over there. He thought he had the angle on him, but a great stiff arm by Yosha allowed him to find the end zone. He's a short little dude, but boy, he's got some burst. Well, you talked about the importance of that drive to open up the second half. Six plays, that's all it took to go 59 yards, 29-7.
used to have cable? I only got some of the games. Now that I have DirecTV NFL Sunday ticket, I can watch every game every Sunday. Which means that everyone wants to come over to my place. And the first rule of hosting? You never want to run out of ice. Become the world's most powerful fan. Get NFL Sunday ticket included at no extra charge. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? i just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Lehigh goes 59 yards, number two, uh, Brandon Yosha, the Miami transfer, 54 of the 59, so he was the workhorse there. He very much was, Mike, and a good job by the offensive line up front. He finds a way through a little seam and then is able to turn on the Jets, run away from Nick Zafalo there to get Lehigh on the board. And you could see a little reminiscent of last week where he had 16 rushes for 70 yards and a touchdown, nine for 76 and a score. And when you have a back you have to respect who can hit a home run on you, that'll change things quickly for your defense. Well, nine carries uh, by the end of the day, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him carry it 20 times. So he's probably looking at his first 100 yard game as a mountain hawk. Short kick in the rain, and this one's gonna fall dead. It's a live ball at the 25 yard line, very wisely jumped on by the Wildcats. And Mike, the, the, the turf is starting to hold some of the rain that is really coming down here. You can see the moisture uh, on the field here uh, at Cowell Stadium, and you can see some of the discoloration. So it's starting to pocket up a little bit. I, I thought that ball was going out of bounds. Instead, it hits the wet turf, ends up dying. Uh, and because this is field turf as opposed to natural grass, the players still have the ability to cut, but the ball will bounce differently. Rain or not, Goldrich comes out, throwing to the 35, and again, it's a Jimmy Giansanti with the catch. Moves the chains, first down for the Cats. Jimmy Giansanti out of uh, Jefferson Hills, Pennsylvania, Thomas Jefferson High School, when I was a Carmichael Mighty Mike in seventh and eighth grade back in PA, played against <laughs> TJ. Goldrich again, wide open oh. as Harris. And he overshoots him at the midfield stripe. Oh, he missed him wide open. Remember earlier we talked about sometimes wide receivers when it's too perfect, when there's no one around, the ball hits you in the hands, and you're like, well, wait, how'd that happen? Well, Sean Goldrich, same thing right there. He's got R.J. Harris left side. No one around him. If he just dropped it on him, he had a chance to maybe be one-on-one -on, -one on the outside and do something for extra yards. He was so wide open, I think he kind of slowed down, and Goldrich uh, might have thought he was going to keep hey, going. Yeah, absolutely. I think you motor down a little bit to make Goldrich sure you have that area. R.J. Harris. Harris on the receiving end of that one, and it's going to bring up a third down in shorts for the Cats. I was going to say that 59-yard drive by Lehigh. I guess the best antidote for New Hampshire is put together another long drive. We've seen him go 81. We've seen him go 90 yards here this afternoon. And Big third down play right here to see if they can uh, keep that momentum from shifting over to Lehigh. Keep churning. Over the middle and the forward progress should give Spears the first down. A host of tacklers finally brings him down. And it looked like uh, 31, uh, Colton Caslow, the middle linebacker, made the initial contact and they spot the ball for a first down. They're gonna move the chains. Smart use of space right there by Harold Spears. All he does is they need two, he goes four, turns around, let his big six foot four, 255 pound frame do the rest in getting the first down. Big boy, no one's gonna knock that ball. No one's gonna run through him to try to knock that ball down. 
as Goldricks now checked, uh, checks out of the previous play. Trips to the top of your screen. And they set up a little screen for R.J. Harris, and Harris has a block. Harris is off to the races. R.J. Harris takes it to the house for the touchdown. R.J. Harris, touchdown, 52 yards, his second score, one on the ground, one through the air. And you see why Goldrich changes the play. Man coverage on the outside, the ability to go one-on-one, -on -one, and they end up getting the ball to Harris behind the line of scrimmage. Look at the block right there. Great effort by Kion Taylor, number six, and then it's off to the races, and R.J. Harris continues to move up the New Hampshire record books, throw it short, let him run and go make a play, but what had to happen for him to score? Great effort on the outside. Breda on for the extra point. And he drills this one through, so R.J. Harris with that catch goes over 3,000 in his career coming into the game. Needed 147 to climb to the number two spot behind David Ball. Nobody will catch Ball, but R.J. Harris, as you said earlier in the broadcast, if it wasn't for David Ball, he'd hold all the records here. Good job of getting out the gate, right up the sidelines, runs away for another score for the Wildcats, up big. Towson is a big university with a small campus feel. It's about going to the school that was at the top of my list. For me, it's about making professional connections. I was able to get an internship with the Baltimore Ravens. Towson is about studying what I'm passionate about. The veterans group helped me get plugged into Towson. It's about the sense of pride you feel when you put on your uniform. Towson is intramural basketball. Rock climbing and skydiving. Towson University is about empowering the students to make positive change. It's a place where dreams happen. Early third quarter here in Durham, New Hampshire up 36 to seven on Lehigh. And what you just saw was a touchdown pass from Sean Goldrich to RJ Harris, where Harris did the majority of the work. Great block by Kion Taylor on the outside. And then Harris was gone down the sidelines for the big touchdown. And Mike, as you mentioned, over 3,000 yards in his career. And how about that? He needed 74, he's right at 74, so he is right at 3,000 yards, so congratulations to R.J. Harris, and you understand now why he's a preseason All-CAA player, and he's on the preseason Walter Payton watch list. This is a guy who has the talent to be National Player of the Year. What is he, 16.55 behind a David Ball, probably. Yeah, that ain't happening. Well, I was just going to say, he had over 1,000 last year. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, 16.55 is doable. Mike, he had a fantastic year last year. He can have a fantastic year this year. But David Ball, I mean, he and Ricky Santos, who is now the wide receivers coach here at New Hampshire, had a great connection. I know Chip Kelly was a big part of that. 
I mean, R.J. Harris is as talented as any wide receiver in FCS football, and you can match him up against some of the guys across the country. I think he's a fantastic player who will get a next-level look. So now Lehigh has to do exactly what they did the last time, and he completes it to Josh Paris. So uh, Lehigh, actually, uh, the new version of the Cardiac Kids, I guess you could say, the six times over the last two years, they erased double-digit deficits to post the W three times in 2012, three again last year, once against this team, New Hampshire, but 36-7. That's a, a big, big, big hill to climb. And at UNH, you're in the dungeon. They've got you in their grasp. This would be a tremendous feat if Lehigh can pull this off. They scored 21 unanswered against New Hampshire last year to pull out that victory, but now again, it's 36-7. And that's uh, something that uh, Casey DeAndre will not let him do, which he did against James Madison. Coach Andy Cohen said that uh, Shipnisky, 121 yards rushing last week, he kept plays alive and on design plays, uh, he knew where to go and how to get there. 51 and Blue McNeely stepping up right there to take on the guard, Matt Ford. Him just stepping up and showing forces Shipnisky to the outside. To where Casey DeAndre can clean up the play. Good, solid, sound team defense right there. McNeely, another PA kid, 6'2", 245, played a lot of good football here. Good assignment football by DeAndre, the corner, to come up and make that stop. Very disciplined on the New Hampshire defense, Mike. Good point. This one's incomplete. I almost said complete again to Josh Paris. I know it's behind a little bit, but you want to get back in this game. You want to turn on offense. Got to be a better ball, but if it hits you in the hands, you got to try to make it. Got to try to find a way to make the spectacular catch. You mentioned Lee Kerfus' 99-yard catch, and then Ryan Spadolo spent time with the Jets and the Dolphins. Coach Cohen says, we probably don't have that type of receiver, but I think we're deeper at receiver this year, but has to be frustrating with all the drop balls here. And Mike, not only that, it's got to start up front. Shefniski in the longer down and distances needs more time to be able to get the ball down the field and have an opportunity to throw. Left-footed punter, again, Safado at the 32, lets it hit, and again, it's a Lehigh bounce. And it rolls dead at about the 16-yard line. But, again, can they stop New Hampshire from another long drive? 9.57 to go, quarter number three, 36-7, Cats in control. Have you ever imagined getting away from it all? Dreamed of sand between your toes? A place where the term online has a whole other meaning. Where the beach is just outside your window. Window shopping just steps away. And your worries? Miles away. A getaway that gets you closer to the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Discover Bay Creek. Nestled in Cape Charles on Virginia's eastern shore, Bay Creek offers signature golf private beaches, the new beach club fitness facility, world-class marina, and a sense of community that will soon have you calling this getaway home. Visit us online to explore the 10 uniquely crafted villages that make up Bay Creek. There's an option for every lifestyle, from low-maintenance townhomes, quiet cottage-style neighborhoods, to a state-style Visit us online to explore all the real estate opportunities or to book your Bay Creek getaway today. Welcome home. Welcome to Bay Creek. Coke Industries started in the heartland and we've expanded to nearly every state. Today, that's more than 60,000 American jobs. You may not always see our name on the products you use, but we help make better food, clothing, shelter, technologies, and other necessities. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. Let's bring this sucker home, right? Don't be denied. Do not be denied. You can't mess with us when we that bad, baby. We bad! All we got, all we got, all we need, all we need. Yeah, Dan McCarney's North Texas Mean Green continue their quest for another postseason appearance. 
Saturday against Nichols State. It's a 3.30 kick from Denton, and you can find it here on ASN. 36-7, the Wildcats on top of the Mountain Hawks. The last possession, uh, Andy Gresh, you mentioned uh, Ricky Santos, record holder here, and probably the guy that got this program really steamrolled. Well, he is, his number two is among the few retired by UNH football, but look at that. I mean, 13,000 yards. Look at the attempts, 1,636, 123 touchdowns. He's from Bellingham, Mass. He's a local guy. Um, it, uh, he's he's first in Division One FCS history with 2,140 plays. Just digest the amount of plays he was in on as Goldrich gets tackled there by this Lehigh defense. I mean that is playing early, but it's digesting an offense that is now all the rage in college football and is now starting to infiltrate pro football through the mind of Chip Kelly a fantastic player and good job by Sean McDonald to bring him back and be on his staff. Santos, when he left here, 19 school records he held. Good rush as uh, the Wildcats try to set up the screen. Now they're going to face a, a third and 12. And uh, so Lehigh looks like their defense, at least on the last two plays, uh, showing some life. For Ricky Santos, though, the Walter Payton Award winner back in 2006. And you mentioned his number two jersey retired. How about Back in high school, huh? 2002 on Thanksgiving Day, threw seven touchdown passes all to his cousin. <laughs> How about that? So a little nepotism there, huh? Just going to cuz and lighting them up. <laughs> seven of nine on third down, the Cats are. And Goldrich wide open. What a catch! Spears goes up over the 45 yard line. And the tight end is having a big afternoon. Oh, what a catch by the big dog. He's been used as a blocker as well. They get him into the slot. You see the blitz picked up. Good job by Jimmy Owens, 32. That's the kind of play Lehigh has not been getting and that they desperately need sinking back in the zone. Good job of bowing it to the middle. And you saw 27, Laquan Lambert would have probably made the interception if Spears didn't haul it in. Boy, Spears competing with uh, Jimmy Santi for the best catch of the afternoon. Again, this one's complete inside the 40-yard line. Again, it's Spears. And that's a career best now for Goldrich, who passed for 291. He's over 300 now. Feed your lawn. Well, feed Harold Spears. Feed him. Look at that. Right behind the linebacker. Good job by Goldrich of putting it on him in a position to where he can make something happen. And the big boy making some plays for UNH. Feed the beefer, baby. Goldrich again goes upstairs. Plenty of time in the pocket. Harris escapes a would-be tackler, and Harris is going to take it to the house for the second time this afternoon via the air. Three touchdowns for number 15, R.J. Harris. And right now, this Lehigh defense just, not only do they not have an answer, but Mike, I think emotionally, uh, it's over for them as well. Get him on the in cut. And he is now in third place. All time at UNH in terms of receiving yards, but C89, Harold Spears, turn, run, try to pick someone off. Honestly, they didn't even need it. He was able to get to the end zone on his own. Well, I agree that I don't think he'll catch David Ball, but I think David Ball is going to be looking at his uh, season, wondering if uh, if he can have a 2000 season. Another uh, mishap on the extra point, so that's uh, about the second or third time this afternoon that they've struggled there. I'll tell you what, Mike, it's an epidemic here. They just have not been able to get it right consistently enough for years, and Coach Max got to fix this quick. Tackling an open space, something they didn't do last week, something that Eddie Cohen said they had to do better today. This is open space, and again, they came up short as R.J. Harris takes it to the house, 42-7, Wildcats. Yeah. I'm big into fantasy football. That's why I got DirecTV NFL Sunday Ticket. They've got a new channel that's fully dedicated to nothing but fantasy. It takes you player to player live, so you can see everything as it happens. Fantasy players rack up the points, which kind of gets me excited. Become the world's most powerful fan. Get the new Fantasy Zone channel with an NFL Sunday ticket only on DirecTV.
best 60 minutes of football taking place on Saturday. You're watching the American Sports Network, Sinclair Broadcast Group's Collegiate Sports Channel, the new home to Conference USA, the Colonial Athletic Association, Big South Conference, Southern Conference, and the Patriot League. In the coming months, watch your favorite college teams across ASN's network of channels throughout the United States. Tune in each Saturday for ASN's live college football coverage. Over 50 games this season. Witness spectacular touchdowns, crunching hits, and fist pumping edge of your seat action that'll take your breath away. And later this fall, college basketball comes your way on ASN. Slam dunks, buzzer beaters, he fires it. Oh, he's it. monster block, three, three, more three. For the time. Don't miss a minute of all the court storming action as teams battle for conference supremacy and invites to the NCAA tournament. The American Sports Network, your new home for live college sports. Mike Gleason along with Andy Grush. And uh, speaking of some of the uh, retired jerseys, uh, Ricky Santos uh, right there, of course, number two. One of three retired jerseys. And David Ball never got his uh, retired, but uh, right now, Mr. Harris, if he keeps playing like this, he might ask to have his retired. <laughs> Simple in cut right here, Mike, and uh, wide open over the middle. He does the rest. You see Spears kind of following him into the end zone, and boy, these New Hampshire wide receivers and the tight end Spears have dominated today. Brandon Leakes has done a good job returning kicks for Lehigh. This is Leakes again at the 13 yard line. Leakes has given Lehigh some decent field position a couple of times. Now he's up over the 30 to the 35 before he's ridden out of bounds. So again, Lehigh down 42 to seven uh, with a chance to, uh, well, a chance because of decent field position. I'll just leave it at that. No doubt, Mike. And again, it comes down to churning. It comes down to grinding out third downs, making the catches, maybe a spectacular play thrown in there like they got during this five play 84 yard drive that ended in the RJ Harris 35 yard touchdown reception. The catch from Harold Spears. Spears needed 165 to hit 1,000 for his career. He's at 116, and this thing ain't over. 500 yards of offense, first time this season, of course, only their second game. Uh, last year, if you take a look at this New Hampshire team, they averaged uh, about 433. They had 375 in that opener. But 500 yards already with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. This could be one of those 700 yard games. It really could be if uh, unless New Hampshire decides to take the foot off the accelerator there. But you can see Sean McDonald still coaching, still getting on his guys. Got to work on the little things if you want to win a national championship. Five receivers uh, this time for uh, Chef Niski. Steps up in the pocket uh, right before the pocket collapse. And the intended receiver was uh, Stefan Sansone. But it falls incomplete. It's going to be third and five for the Mountain Hawks. Well, starting to get some of the rotational players in on this New Hampshire defense right now. And you could see number 97, Robbie Zach, who's a senior at 6'2", 244, did a nice job working against the left tackle, Ned Daryush there, put Daryush's fanny right in the lap of the quarterback, Shifniski. Daryush, a two-time all-conference pick, too. This one's complete, shy of the first. So had to get to the 45 for the first down. So fourth and short, you're down 42-7. You punt it away? Oh, no. Oh, good grief. You're going for it here. And, uh, you know, maybe this is your chance to, uh, again, if it's me and I'm coaching, I'm going to try to get the fourth down. Then I'm going to line up quick and try to hit a big play. I mean, really, I'm going to play the hurry up game, try to convert this. I know it's a good two yards, but if I convert it, line it up quick, trying to make something happen. Two yards to go for the first down. They keep it on the ground and trying to turn the corner. A nice job by uh, Shodake, who had 96 yards last week in the opener. And the spots, they're going to move the chains. It's going to be a first down. He did get the first down, Mike. Uh, Robbie Zach, 97 again, slicing in there. He shows in the backfield. It forced Sadeki to kind of bounce outside a little bit. And uh, that's a big fourth down. See, again, yeah, this for me here, 
I'd have tried to hurry up and slide one in and see if I could make a big pass play as New Hampshire starts to rotate these uh, backup defenders in to get them a little experience. This is why New Hampshire's so good. They get these backups playing time. Play action, top of your screen looking and good coverage and a penalty flag, so uh, check that. It looked like it from this vantage point, but Nick uh, Safalo, the uh, senior from Basking Ridge, New Jersey, is going to get the yellow flag. Well, he never turned around to look for the football. It was basically face guarding there, working against Sansone. So that was a uh, that was an easy call there for the back judge. Number from the original line of scrimmage. First down. On the college ranks, there had to be some physical contact because uh, the, the DB doesn't have to turn around in the college ranks. Well, and, and I know they don't, but I think you're trained as an official. It's the whole, you know he doesn't have to turn around, but when you don't, it kind of looks bad. It doesn't help you no. in terms of making your case. And I guess that's my point with all that. And plus, if I'm a guy getting beat in college, I'm croaking the receiver. It's only 15. It's not a spot <laughs> foul. <laughs> Good point. Double wides on both sides of the line of scrimmage. They keep it on the ground. Yosha is uh, spun around inside the 35-yard line, got down to about the 33, but he was a uh, hit and a hit hard. Keith Parkinson, 33, is the guy who delivered that hit. And uh, I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if they got him out of the game only because, you know, that was a big thump right there. And it took Parkinson uh, a second or two to kind of get up off the ground, but it looks like he's okay. He's uh, one of the rotational players at the whip safety spot. They got him back there playing. It looks like free safety right now. Parkinson with uh, two of the 15 interceptions last year for this team. Yes! And oh! pressure, wet field. And a good rush by Shane McNeely. And that's the fourth sack of the afternoon without getting any in the opener. Well, they just bring the backer from the outside. And you can see there's Ciccone slamming down. No one there to take care of uh, Shane McNeely. And you can see the play. It looked like it might have been a bit of a design rollout or something. The offensive line slid to the right. McNeely gets sent on the blitz. Did you see him pause there for a second before he went after the quarterback? Made sure he had contain, then attack. Sound football. Trips to the top of your screen, Andy. It's uh, third and 14. What do you call here? A play that gets me 15. <laughs> All right. Pressure. Wow. Another drop football by Paris. And the sophomore from Whitehall, Nick Shefniski, got nailed as he delivered the ball. Croaked in the pocket. Paris can't make the catch. Honestly, Mike, I had no answer. You know, what do you call here? What has worked? I mean, in the first half, I think the longest play they had of any in the first half was a 16-yarder by anybody. But look in the pocket right here. Nudson again. Big hit by Nudson. Good call. Good pick up there, Mike. That's a big thump in the pocket. And on this one, you got a punt. Inside five minutes, 42 to seven. It's the follow back at the 10 yard line. Fourth and a mile, get it inside the 15 and out of bounds, preferably. Once again, uh, one thing to say about that punter, the left-footed punter, they get the uh, bounce. Another Lehigh bounce puts it down at about the seven yard line. So we're in the dungeon, and the dungeon is getting a facelift. It's going to look a lot different uh, when they open up the 2016 season. Mike, I've been coming here for a long time, since 1992, and this has been approved. The good folks in New Hampshire are going to get a renovated athletic complex, and they're hoping it will be ready for the 2016 season. They raised $5 million in private funds, and then the university system and the New Hampshire Board of Trustees approved the rest of this plan for a much needed facility. You ask me, is it a rehab or a facelift? No, no, no. This is doing it the way this football program, and quite honestly, this coach deserves. Lehigh now with, uh, finally gets a break. Uh, no indication by the officials. Finally, they say it's Lehigh football. And on that wet field, it looked like Owens uh, popped through the line of scrimmage, but coughed up the football after the initial hit. But, and Mike, let's take a look at this uh, exchange. No, he's got the football, and that's just a great job there by DJ Bourgeois. Very nice, thank you very much. Bourgeois with the uh, the tackle and the rip 
out of the midst of Jimmy Owens, and maybe this can breathe a little life into this Lehigh offense. And, and Mike, I thought defensively they were dead from an emotional standpoint. That's a big play to give you some hope. Well, DJ Bourgeois was not even on the two deeps, and that's the second big defensive play that he's made here this afternoon. That's why you're one of the best, picking up the color guy who's got no idea. <laughs> Well, he wasn't on my board. <laughs> so a golden opportunity now with 440 to go. Touchdown. And this is going to be a touchdown for the Mountain Hawks. Nick Shefniski, the sophomore, but 121 yards rushing last week, and a rushing touchdown gets in for their 13th point. That's a killer. Turnover inside the 10-yard line. You give immaculate field position to any football team. And Shefniski, good job on the old play fake. You see him tuck it up. Good block on the outside as well against Casey uh, or Casey DeAndrade. Good effort. Good job by Lehigh capitalizing on an opportunity. Nice Parrish. job by Andy Cohen there telling Paris. Yeah, good work on the outside, exactly. Andy with the extra points. And it's 42 to 14. Little life for Lehigh, a little something here. Jeff Niski couldn't get out of the pocket. That's where they wanted to make sure he didn't get out of the pocket, and he's uh, going to score a few of these this year. He had three key blocks there. Darius, the left tackle on the kick out, uh, and then you had Brandon Yosha, the little guy, getting up there and just getting enough of Parkinson to create a lane for Shefniski, and then good job by Josh Parrish on the outside. And, um, you know, at 42-14, I'm starting to wonder if you field position, you, you've had field position. Your defense has given up 90 yard drives. You need the football. And if you've got some sort of trick play, not just line up, here we go, onside kick, ho hum. If I'm Andy Cohen and he, he's in a pondering, that's a pondering look right there as in, gee, <laughs> if I got something, do I roll it out here? Whether it's a pooch, and I'll tell you what, New Hampshire's got a big offensive lineman lined up around the 35-yard line. And if I'm going to pooch that thing, I might kick it towards him because that's a non-traditional player on a kickoff team. Andrew Lauderdale already did a good job, though, of jumping on a loose ball, a free ball at the 25-yard line. Nope, yeah. kicked it deep. Going to kick it deep, and it's taken at the 9-yard uh, the line. Casey DeAndre is up over the 20 to about the 23. You know, for the most part, you talk about John Lyons, a defensive coordinator. You look at uh, the quarterback, Shifneski, 121 yards rushing. We saw him score the touchdown there, but look at the numbers. 12 attempts, just two yards rushing with that touchdown. Wow. Boy, that's that's not only a testament to the scheme that uh, John Lyons has come up with, but the play of his defensive line and how they have dominated the line of scrimmage for the most part. Interesting that Goldrich is still in this game with 4.30 to go in the, uh, in the third quarter with a big, big lead. I was just saying, uh, number 15, R.J. Harris is not on the field. And Harris just 37 yards shy of moving into second place all time at the school. And another acrobatic attempt by Giansante, but the penalty flag will give him the 15-yard penalty. Yeah, no, it's going to be on Giansante here, Mike, because when he stopped, he pushed the defender away on the redirect, and the official came running up the sidelines to emphatically say offensive. Scrimmage. Well, and referee Tony Marcello agrees with you, so good call. Well, and Mike, some of this may have come from that touchdown that we saw earlier where he climbed over the receiver and he stopped. There was a little bit of contact there. But when Gene Santi stops to redirect, working against the corner on the outside, gets his hands on him, and here's what it is. It's kind of like I mentioned the whole turning, the face guard, it doesn't look good. As a wide receiver, when you're trying to create space and your arms are extended, that's no bueno. Goldrich flirting with a 400-yard afternoon, four touchdowns. That's a career high, obviously. Owens uh, gets the majority of the carries. If you joined us late, Nico Storetti uh, was injured early in the game, way back in the first quarter, has not returned. But the way the game has gone, that doesn't surprise me because they want to save him for the rest of the year. Exactly. The CAA opener next week for these New Hampshire Wildcats where they take on Richmond. You need Steretti for that game. They were working on the left ankle down here. So it's really been the uh, Jimmy Owens show. I mean, there have been a couple of stars today. It's been R.J. Harris. It's been Harold Spears. Jimmy Owens doing a good job. But Sean Goldrich, after the ball was flying on him early, has settled down, delivered a nice ball all day. 
Goldrich, nice catch by uh, Keon Taylor. Well, they've got a lot of receivers with some pretty good hands on this team. Yeah, Taylor's one of those guys, Mike. He's only a sophomore, 5'11", 179. Uh, he's, he's not super thick, but he's quick. He's got the ability to catch it short, take it long. And I, I look at Jared Allison and Taylor as two guys who you could put them on it at two yards, and then they'll make someone miss in condensed space and then go get you some extra yardage for your offense. Third and four. Goldwich again goes upstairs and uh, some contact over there with Rigo, but no penalty flags. It's going to bring up a uh, punting situation now, a rare punting situation uh, for the Wildcats here today. Mike, it looked to me like Taylor slipped on this turf, and you can start to see the water building up here. You get the field turf. It's a pretty steady rain that we've had here in Durham for a period of time, and you can see on the screen, especially in between the hashes, where it's a little bit of that darker green. That's where it's slippery. I know that one was outside the numbers. It's going to become an issue in the passing game, and quite honestly, the weather works against Lehigh coming back in this one. Prasky at the 15. Paris standing at his own 30-yard line. A good punt by Prasky. Oh, smoked it. Taken at the 20. And saw the wedge, but a great job of uh, getting down there on the special teams. Looked like number 31. Uh, that was uh, Patrick Mensah. Nice job by Mensah. So it puts the ball at the 21-yard uh, line. And you're getting back to that uh, stadium, the new stadium. I got a kick out of the athletic director, Marty Scarano. He said this project may be long overdue, but the wait will be worth it. I, it will be. It's spoken very well, I think. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And uh, hey, they'll pack them in here. When this New Hampshire team is good, this is SRO, standing room only, little club area there. And I know a part of this renovation is going to go to some of the other sports here at the University of New Hampshire. I think it's just a fact of the economics of sports nowadays if you're going to play at this high level at the FCS. You know, again, I played at Rhode Island. They've had issues with their stadium. They were going to leave the league and then came back. But look at some of the facilities. The Alphon family dropped a bunch of money up at Maine. They have a great building. Richmond redid their stadium a couple years ago. It's absolutely fantastic. Towson's got a great facility. It's time for the people here at New Hampshire to have that level playing field in terms of wowing kids when they walk in the door. Albany has a brand new stadium, second year. Beautiful yeah. facility. Well, Yosha's really getting on track now. I don't know if uh, Father Time is on his side with 2.22 to go in the third, but Yosha finding some running lanes right now for Lehigh. And you can see how slick it is for Yosha right there. You know, the arms are starting to get wet a little bit. That's one of the things running backs are gonna have to worry about. As the ball gets slick, you gotta make sure to try to dry those arms off the best you can. If I were a coach, I'd want my guys in the rain to go with those rubber sleeves that you see fumblers in the National Football League use for grip. Play action, uh, Paris holds on to this one for the first down. Up over the 40 to about the 46 yard line. And look for someone like me who didn't have the largest arms in the world. I wasn't Hulk Hogan or anything like that out on the field. You always wore the elbow sleeves because it covered up puny biceps. <laughs> it made them look bigger naturally. I'm telling you, look for those linemen who got those sleeves on. They look pretty bad out there when they got them going. You played in the 90s. You should have been in the weight room. More. Yeah, I was in the weight room, but I didn't eat good. I was eating hot dogs. As we were at halftime. Yeah, yeah, boy. Minute 28 to go again. This one's going to be picked off. Chalette, the linebacker, rumbling down inside the 20. Finally driven out of bounds at the 15-yard line. And that is the second forced turnover that the Wildcats have had. Good job. Just a lot of bodies around the football, Mike. I wonder about the throw from Shifniski there. And you see Chalette, well, it hits him in the hands. And it bounces off Stefan Sansone, and then Chalette is there. Almost thought it might have been a horse collar, but the hand got down a little bit from Sadeki. And uh, what can go wrong for Lehigh today, Mike, has gone wrong. Well, Stefan Sansone was trying to get open, and I thought Daniel Rowe, number 20, in the safety spot had, had his hands all over him yeah, as he tried to get over the middle. But a little, little, little contact there, no question. <laughs> Just a little bit. Goldrich uh, looking for a 400-yard afternoon. Comes up, and this oh! one's off. A lot of green for Brandon Leakes, but not enough. The quarterback makes sure that it's not a pick six. 
Wow, talk about jumping around and keeping Lehigh in this football game. What a fantastic job by the guy who's done great all day as a kick returner, 26, Brandon Leakes. Just gonna check it up on the outside. Balls out. Oh, yeah, that is prototypical right there. Even if the receiver had kept his feet, he was gonna make that and have a chance to go all the way. Might have been able to slow down some and wait for some of his mates to come and possibly block Goldridge, but what an outstanding job of reading and recognizing by Brandon Leakes. And now Lehigh's got a little life. Leakes the MVP on the scout team last year, now getting a chance to start and do his thing. And this is good coverage, but the ball is complete. Probably got a yard at best though. Number 44, Tyler Coyle, the senior from West Milford, New Jersey. Andy Cohen, he's had 96 all-conference picks, nine last year, but seven of the nine are gone. He said in that James Madison game, he had 12 first-year starters in that opener. So they'll drop to 0-2 for the first time in a long time, unless they have a very, very heroic fourth quarter here in New Hampshire. Shefniski goes back to work to keep it on the ground. Yosha's over 100 yards and had some running room, but a nice job to come up and make the stop. It was uh, Cam Shorey. If you're not going to be able to get massive chunks, then you've got to just bleed it slowly here. And I think with such a big lead for New Hampshire, that coverage is going to be off. You're going to have to take the four and five yard gains and be patient. But when you get a chance, you better hit your big one. Final play of the third quarter. If they get the snap off, they don't. And I think it actually caught uh, Shefniski by surprise. I heard some of the Lehigh coaches in the next yeah, booth. Not happy. Not happy. Yeah. So Andy Cohen has 15 minutes to go to fine tune their acts. But that score right there is all Wildcats 42-14. They say to succeed in college, you need to. Take good notes. Make new friends. Manage your time. Find a quiet place to study. And above all, sit in the front row. It's not what they say, it's what you do with it. Find your classroom at the University of New Hampshire, where education is more than a matter of degree. Heading for the fourth quarter of 42 to 14. It's been all Wildcats here today. Lehigh has the football and Andy, are they trying to fine tune their act or they actually think in 15 minutes they have enough time to erase this deficit? Mike, I think it's fine tuning and quite honestly, if I'm Andy Cohen, I'm looking to see what kind of fight my guys have because I know they've won close games over the years, but every year it's a new dynamic with every football team. So I'm evaluating who's busting their hump, who's giving extra effort, and who's gonna make some big plays? Maybe I'm gonna find a backup who's worthy of some playing time. 
Well, so far, Brandon Yosha, the Miami transfer, he's been busting his hump. He's over 100 yards. And there's a uh, quarterback keeper down to the 20-yard line. So Shepnisky continues to uh, go to work uh, with this 42-14 to deficit. And I also think that from the Lehigh perspective here, the CAA is so good. And I know that in terms of the media folks, they picked James Madison where they did, but New Hampshire, this is one of the better teams in the country. It's a top 10 team, so you find out where you're at. And I think now, given that they're gonna go back to the Patriot League, where the scholarship situations are a little different, this is gonna help Lehigh, I think, in the long run, because they've seen an elite team that is national championship caliber. A little pump fake. And this one uh, falls incomplete, batted away by uh, Casey DeAndre. You know, I mentioned the fact that he had 20 passes broken up last year. That was number two in the nation. Very, I, very I'm, aggressive. I'm digging that hair, too. I like the guys with the hair out of the helmet. You know, all these coaches are so old school now. Ah, cut your hair. I used to hear it all the time. I had big, long hair in the back when I first got down to URI. It was actually kind of a mullet. Okay, I'll admit it. You know, all I needed was the old Canadian tuxedo, and I'd be okay walking in the facility. But I kind of <laughs> like the hair hanging out of the back. It's old throwback. I agree with you. You're an old school guy. Man. I'm an old school guy. Nowhere to go. He's going to be uh, tracked down by number 85, Brian Ciccone. That's going to be his second sack. If indeed they do give him a sack, uh, they should. It was a loss of four or five on the play. Yeah, don't get me going on that. Running quarterbacks, tackle for loss, what's a sack? Ciccone doing a nice job there against 72, Zach Duffy. And at the end of that play, uh, about one of the worst things that you can do. Actually, I think it might have been Darius there on the left side. Anytime you see an offensive lineman sort of pulling his quarterback away from someone, yeah, it's not good. That ain't good. <laughs> I, I did that one time. Just one time? One time, career, and huh? you corrected quick. This one's complete down near the 10 yard line. And he found a Keon Taylor for the reception. And uh, once again, Lehigh now with 13.47 to go. Chef Nisky here in the pocket, little design rollout. We used to call it 90 protection. Good job of getting the ball to Sansone on the play. And now you're uh, oh, first and 10 on the 11. So they can get a first down at the one here for Lehigh. Yeah, thank you. It was Sansone. The Keon Taylor, of course, wears number six as well, but the other team. So I stand corrected well, there. Mike, New Hampshire scored so much, I can understand it. A little fade pattern looking for Paris, and this time he pulls it in and holds on. No, they're going to say it's incomplete. Wow. Because he broke the plane and looked like he had control. Again, a replay might go back and rule this a touchdown. Yeah, I thought it was a touchdown. I also thought it was offensive pass interference, quite honestly, because Parrish watched him push off right there. He pushes off to go up, and let's see. He's got goes down to the ground, and... Trying to see where the ball came no, out. I didn't mean, maintain it, control like well, and, and here's the thing, Mike. Based on that camera angle, I don't know if we would have been able to definitively say that he went to the ground and maintained possession. So the call probably would have stood. Shota came. Nowhere to go. He's wrapped up by making the initial contact. Number 90, Rashid Armand, the junior from Brooklyn, New York. So we've called just about every defensive player's name here for New Hampshire this afternoon. They've been all over the place. Yeah, and you see big 72, Zach Duffy down on the ground. You see him trying to hop up there. They're going to have to get him out of this game because the scariest thing for offensive linemen is when guys come in from behind and you get rolled up. And unfortunately for Duffy, not only did he get rolled up, he kind of bent backwards at the end of that play. And that's among the dangers of, of playing offensive line. And especially in these zone reads where you've got a ton of bodies in the middle and you're trying to... You know, cause misdirection. Guys come flying in because they're out of position, so they're gonna leap to make a play. There's 72 right there. You see him, and then watch at the end. Hmm. Ends up in it vertically, by the way, caught from behind by Rashid Armand. And the problem with that play, and I know in the National Football League, you look at a, a, a Rob Gronkowski for the New England Patriots, the hit he took, they talk about being defenseless. 
that's a play where it's completely inadvertent. There's right. nothing you can do, but you're defenseless. You can't brace yourself forward. You can't slide your leg forward a little bit. You never know it's coming. And uh, in watching it again, it looked like he kind of got legged whipped there. The big right tackle at 6'5", 3'10". And we'll see who the coaching staff turns to here, Mike, because Winter Nunez was listed as the backup. He was the starter, so Duffy was in for him. So now you're going to either taking a, a two deep, you're either taking a starter and kicking him outside and putting in your next best interior player, or you got to go to what is really a, a, a third string tackle, which is never good for anybody because at the FCS level, you just don't have the kind of depth you do up at the FBS. Uh, looks like number 75 is in uh, Matthew Cohen at that right tackle spot. So Cohen replaces Duffy, who made the start, as uh, Andy pointed out. This one's over the middle, and again, it's uh, complete to Sansone, but again, as soon as he touched the football, he was wrapped up. And New Hampshire brought the heat as well. They brought it right over that right side. Let's test the new tackle. And, and Mike, you asked me at the beginning of the quarter, are you really in it, or are you fine-tuning? Well, here you go. You're going to find out how deep your offensive line is, and if you need to start to work guys a little differently in practice to insulate yourself from having to put in a third or fourth stringer during the year. So a timeout is called by Lehigh, and I'm not sure if they, they wanted to do that, but they came out with a fourth down, five to go, fourth and five. If they got down to the one yard line, it'd be a first and goal, but we're gonna step away and take a timeout. 12-12 to go, Lehigh threatening, facing a fourth down, trailing 42-14. favorite time is to be at the Rock on a Saturday when the Golden Eagles are playing because when the team comes out onto the field through all the smoke and all the music and things like that, that is uh, the, the ultimate excitement. Hattiesburg's historic M.M. Roberts Stadium hosts Appalachian State and our ASN Game Day crew next Saturday night at 7 p.m. Check your local listings. At Villanova University, I've learned how to analyze the problem and come up with a solution. In the classroom, that means calculations and research. But in Chapo, Panama, working with a local community, it's as real world as it gets. We're making decisions that will impact water supply for 4,000 people. Some people think we're crazy for taking this on. I say, it's just what we do. Ignite change. Go Nova. Nearly 60 million Americans depend on free local TV. News, sports, weather emergencies, especially diverse communities, rural towns, the elderly. They save thousands every year on cable and satellite bills. Pay TV providers don't like that. They're pushing Washington to change the rules and cripple free TV. Call Congress. Tell them to stand up for 60 million Americans and stand up to pay TV providers. Don't mess with free TV. Back in New Hampshire, there's the brand new lights uh, showing this Saturday afternoon, turning into a rainy Saturday afternoon, but uh, some of the young fans the 2014 home opener have stuck around and right now Lehigh trying to cut into that 42 to 14 deficit but it's fourth down and this one's going to be caught in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. So number 85 uh, pulls in his first touchdown pass as uh, Pelletier Troy Pelletier a true freshman from Deerfield New Hampshire. Well, a New Hampshire kid getting an opportunity to make a play, he gets a snap, and he does that. And Keith Parkinson, 33, had some really tight coverage, hands on him, 
Shifniski decided right away, I'm going to the back in the end zone. I'm going to make this throw and give him an opportunity. Give him credit. Pelletier, good job there. 42-20. Here's uh, Ryan Pandy, the sophomore from Clearwater, Florida, looking for number 21. Right down the middle. And with 12.08 to go, the big question is, well, I hate to go there and make it dramatic because New Hampshire, every, it seems like they've answered every time that Lehigh has scored. And there's Shifniski in the pocket here. You could see him looking left side, and then he settles in on Pelletier. And look at the coverage here by Parkinson. He's got his hands all over him. Could have thrown the flag. It would have been all for naught. Pretty good pocket. Nice job, good time, the ability to step up. It's a good throw to the outside of the defender. You see Parkinson, the old clap of the hands. He had pretty good coverage there at that point. And, and Mike, now that we're in a three score game, uh, Lehigh's got two timeouts left, New Hampshire's got all three. But here's where you roll, here's where you probably are gonna roll out your onside kick. And judging by the huddle that New Hampshire's got around their 30 yard line, uh, Looked like a I, good hand, Steve. Yeah, right? I'm seeing a lot of guys in there with some twos and threes and single numbers. Although they got big old Lauderdale out there, so I guess they think they're going to end up kicking this thing off. But as I said before, I see an offensive lineman. I need to pooch it. I'm going towards him. I'm going to try to create some havoc by kicking it to a big boy. Who's to say that number 75 Lauderdale doesn't have good hands? Oh, he ends up going all. Who, who was that a uh, bunch of years ago? Big old, oh, there it is. See, there's your pooch. The opposite way, free ball goes out of bounds, and the live ball is dead once it goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So the onside kick is uh, unsuccessful. Kicked it towards a linebacker, though. I mean, you got a big boy standing there. Go to that, go to that other side. Ball's five yards from the dead ball spot. First down. I tell you what it was, Mike. I just thought of it. And the whole lineman thing, it was Dan Connolly of the New England Patriots had a big rumbling, bumbling, stumbling run down the left sideline a couple years ago where the big boy got tackled. I think it was like inside the 10. And it was kind of like, look at the fat guy go, look at the fat guy go. And everybody started to get fired up. He kicked the ball towards linemen. I mean, it's a, to me, it's what smart teams do. Hey, you, I never a got a chance. Lineman, I was just trying to give you guys uh, a little credit. love. Yeah. A little love. This one's complete on the bubble screen. And uh, rumble down for the uh, first down is uh, number 24 on the receiver. That's Mike Kelly. So as I mentioned just moments ago, every time Lehigh scores, it seems like the Wildcats answer. We got a player down on this uh, Lehigh defense here. That's number 13, Stephen Wilmington. One of the new starters on the back end, one of the safeties. And uh, Wilmington had that early season, early game INT uh, for Lehigh. Some out, out of scores. Yeah, uh, ye old alma mater getting mm -hmm. smacked once again. Yikes. Good, good bounce back for Fordham after they got ripped by Villanova last week. Three point game, Bryant over Maine. Big win there for uh, Bryant College. Tough one for Maine. Bryant's a tough place to go to. You see Towson over Delaware State. James Madison goes to one and one. Well, it's third quarter. I guess that game's not over yet, so it's 31-22. Uh, James Madison in a little bit of a transition. Got a new head coach there, and uh, you know there's always that transition time that you're that you're going to have. But the CAA from Towson to Villanova to New Hampshire. If there's one thing about this league, Mike. You know, a lot of people will want to compare it to one of the bigger leagues. Look, just say this. They're the best conference in FCS, and they prove it every year. You mentioned transition. How about a transition back to Andy Grash during his playing days at Rhode Island? Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, you looked uh, pretty mean there in your stance. Either that or I looked like a fat guy who's got a helmet on that's too small. Look like a tick that's about to pop for crying out loud. Looks like an old. That's a good uh, effort like there. An old picture of the Houston Oilers. Look like it lined up for. Oh them. hey, we, <laughs> we went to those like North Carolina looking uniforms, but you know what it is? I had too much too much lean on the hand. We must have been doing a downhill run play. <laughs> a little 33 action. Stephen Wilmington, one of the four new starters in the secondary, the senior from Ravina, Ohio. He had the first quarter pick. He goes out. Big loss on the defensive secondary for Lehigh. First and 10 at the 43 yard line. Goldrich uh, still in the ball game as Wildcats looking at a 600 yard afternoon. And uh, Owens uh, getting a break as they bring in another running back now. Number uh, eight is uh, Trayvon Bryant. So uh, Nico Storetti goes out with an injury in the first quarter. 
And Jimmy Owens uh, carried most of the load this afternoon. The Dalton Cross, and they thought they might see that sophomore earlier in the season, but uh, he injured his leg and he tweaked the injury on Tuesday on practice. And Owens is back on the field. Always had great depth as you see Owens now go over the 600 mark. So back to back games for this Lehigh defense, giving up over 600 total yards. Uh, not something that's going to sit well with Andy Cohn, obviously, but you mentioned the backs. I mean, you can go all the way back to, to kids like Chad Cackert, who were here, who produced a ton of yards and looked 606 last week and 600 today. And UN, to yeah, UNH still kind of churning the ball down the field. And Sean Goldrich still in the game of quarterback. I'll address that after this play as Goldrich uh, takes off. Good coverage. Now he finally fires it down the field and somehow completes it. Once again, the big tight end, Harold Spears, is having a career day. Boy, he's done a good job of moving without the football. When Goldrich breaks out of the pocket, Spears does a nice job of running to some space and giving him the ability to get the ball down the field. Wasn't a ton of zip on that one, but a great effort by Spears. You mentioned Goldrich still in the game, of course. Uh, Sean McDonald remembers blowing leads in previous years. And they got to 21 or 14, 21. He said, you know what? There's no way we're going to blow this. If Goldrich has to play the whole game, he'll play the whole game. But no doubt. Bayless is in there right now. And Lehigh's done a good job of uh, tightening things up a little bit here in this third quarter. Bayless hit at the line of scrimmage. And uh, Bayless, uh, when he came in the last time, he carried the football, and uh, you kind of knew he was going to run with it. Yeah, Andy Bayless has done a nice job of running the ball, but as we kind of cross over into the fourth quarter, I think Lehigh's shown us a little something. Had a turnover that set up a touchdown. You then came down and had the pick six. You saw some grit offensively. You score a touchdown on fourth and five. So some good things for Lehigh to hang their hat on here, even though the score is as lopsided as it is. Second and goal. This one's complete at about the six forward progress. We'll bring it back to about the six, close to the five yard line. Again, it's Spears on the receiving end. And Mike, to your point about leaving Goldrich into the game, coaches, they have long memories. You see Goldrich to the right side here, gets it to Spears once again. Boy, Spears needed, I think it was like 165 it was to reach 1,000 yards. Boy, he's gonna, he's gonna push it. A thousand for his career. <laughs> Not a thousand so. in two games. Goldrich steps up nicely, and this one's going to be a touchdown to Spears, his second of the afternoon. No, they said incomplete. Oh, he dropped it. Well, the umpire ended up ruling it incomplete, and hey, caught me off guard too, Mike. I wow. thought that was a touchdown. What happened there? He leaned into it. The interesting. Uh, oh, and we have a up. we have a false alarm on the cannons. I guess we weren't the only ones uh, surprised here. Maybe or they got a Lincoln. Guard. I mean, uh, looking at Spears, he's either uh, he's gassed, disgusted Mike. with himself or he thought he held on to it. Look at that 20 yard average. That's uh, that's impressive. In that's itself. doing something. Seven for 142 and a score. That is a productive day. So well, Christian uh, Breda is on with a chance for a field goal. And. They got it. I didn't see an indication by the officials, but uh, they're going to give him 45. That's going to be his first field goal as a new kicker for this New Hampshire team. 45-21, Cats in control. The best 60 minutes of football taking place on Saturday.
Andy, you mentioned Sean McDonald has a, a long memory. He was hoping his players had short memories from that Toledo Rocket game, and obviously that was the case. He put 45 on the board with plenty of time left as we take a look at the uh, schedule on the road next week at Richmond, uh, Dartmouth, and then at Elon, the new member of the CAA. And then the run really begins. Elon, William & Mary, who defensively is pretty good. You get another bye week mixed in there. And then you go Stony Brook, Albany, at Rhode Island, and Delaware. So the, the schedule based on preseason predictions do soften as they go. But I had Stony Brook last year, James Madison, with Mickey Matthews fighting for his job, and James Madison looking for a playoff spot. And Chuck Fiore and his crew went down there and did a great job. So Stony Brook's a, a team to be reckoned with. Leaks again. Finds another lane. Brandon Leaks spins up over the 35-yard line. He's had a nice afternoon returning kicks. And, of course, we saw that near pick six that he had back in the uh, earlier in the fourth quarter. Good job of jumping the route right there. And uh, that's the last thing Sean McDonald want to see, wants to see, excuse me, in a 34 point game is one of his players hobbling off the field onto the uh, sidelines on a kick return. And, and now we're getting to the point, Mike. And I talk about the conditions of being here in New Hampshire. You know, if you're, you're an away team, you feel like you're in the woods, you're all alone. Now you're down a ton, it's raining, it's wet. If you're Lehigh now, it's we're just looking to get the heck out of here. Well, they keep it on the ground, and the new running back uh, in for Lehigh is uh, number 28. Uh, gets his first carry. That's uh, Christopher Lee. So for most of the uh, the afternoon, uh, Brandon Yosho is over 100 yards here this afternoon. Uh, he gets the breather. I haven't seen much of Rich Shodake, who had 96 last week. Yeah, a little surprised at that. I think the inefficiency of the offense and uh, your down and distance might dictate your ability as to who you're going to give the football to and the kind of plays you're going to run. Lee again. He's up over the 40. Uh, keeps those legs going, but he's pushed back by a host of Wildcats. Now, let me ask you this, Andy. Now, you, you talk about the fact that uh, New Hampshire's had 10 straight trips to the postseason, 143 consecutive weeks in the polls. So that speaks for itself. Sure. But how important was this game after not only getting beat 52 to 14 or 54 to 20, but you go back to that North Dakota State game, they gave up over 50. They gave up over 50 last week. So that's 106 to 34 the last two games. So how badly did they need this one? Well, I, I take the North Dakota State part of it out only because of the, the element of last year. Every team, it's a new year. So in terms of what happened against Toledo, Look, they've done a good job against FBS teams. They just got beat really in the second half, and I don't think they're that far off. When you look at this New Hampshire defense, you see seniors for the most part across the defensive line. You've got a senior in McNeely at linebacker. You've got Rowe and Timms, guys who are juniors and seniors, and Nick Safalo is a senior. So you got a lot of experience, and quite honestly, from my end, look, you kick up, you play an FBS opponent, you get smacked, in all reality, at this level, take the check. I go to live and play another day. I think this is good work, though, Mike, off of the week off. They had the bye week. They were able to tighten things up, and it is translated in a big way against a team that they – Lehigh came in with a big old bullseye on them oh, yeah. in the minds of these Wildcats. Oh, yeah, they uh, they thought that uh, – Lehigh thought Time they could out. win it. And, of course, Andy Cohen Lehigh. mentioned the fact that this is, uh, after losing to James Madison, uh, a CAA team, they thought this was another golden opportunity to uh, shine on the Patriot League. And, Mike, you mentioned something about Sodeki not getting the ball very much. Last week against James Madison, Sodeki, Yosha, and Shifnisky, the quarterback, accounted for all 49 carries when they ran for 287 yards. And it really took for the second half for them to be able to feed the ball to Yosha to get any sort of positive yardage. So I think the fact that it was it was fumble and then punt, 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 they never got anything going. You can't really get your running backs into the football game. So I think being down, which forces you to throw, you're down 29 nothing at the half, you're going to have to chuck it when you come out in the second half. You couldn't remain patient, stay within your offense. So really, I think it's, it's as, of course, it's what the New Hampshire defense did, but it's as much as how that first quarter went down 15 nothing that maybe took those backs out of the game here in hindsight. You mentioned uh, New Hampshire not being too far off against Toledo. That was a uh, tight ball game with four minutes to go in the third quarter. And uh, Coach Lyons was saying that uh, they gave up five, plays of 20 or more yards this one goes into the end zone so it's coming out 
But against the Toledo Rockets, they gave up five plays of over 20 yards in the fourth quarter alone, two in the third. That hasn't happened this afternoon. 6.43 to go in the game. That can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. You're watching the American Sports Network, Sinclair Broadcast Group's Collegiate Sports Channel, the new home to Conference USA, the Colonial Athletic Association, Big South Conference, Southern Conference, and the Patriot League. In the coming months, watch your favorite college teams across ASN's network of channels throughout the United States. Tune in each Saturday for ASN's live college football coverage. Over 50 games this season. Witness spectacular touchdowns, crunching hits, and fist pumping edge of your seat action that'll take your breath away. And later this fall, college basketball comes your way on ASN. Slam dunks, buzzer beaters, he fires it. Oh, he it. monster block, three, three, and more three. To the Don't miss a minute of all the court storming action as teams battle for conference supremacy and invites to the NCAA tournament. The American Sports Network, your new home for live college sports. And we'll welcome you back uh, to New Hampshire. Mike Gleason, Andy Gresh, and uh, take a look at uh, Andy Cohen and Lehigh's schedule coming up on the road at Yale. Monmouth, Bucknell. Now keep in mind they've been in the Patriot League Championship four straight years. But the last two they lost on their home turf. Now this year, if it comes down to the Lafayette game, they're going to play that one in Yankee Stadium. That's kind of cool. Yeah, how about that? And uh, a good showcase there for both of those schools. Long-standing rivalry. Those rivalry games are a ton of fun, unless you lose. Donald Goodrich uh, getting the carry, a redshirt uh, freshman. So now we're backups across the board here. Uh, Mike, Andy Valis in the game, former starter. His brother, a former defensive lineman here at the University of New Hampshire. Uh, I think they're out of the Concord, New Hampshire area. And uh, sister, a great soccer player as well. Pretty athletic family. Yeah, so Andy Velas uh, in at quarterback, as you mentioned. And uh, a couple of years ago in the playoffs, we saw him play against Wofford. So. Got to hand it to uh, Velas, the uh, senior, stepping aside for Goldrich, a junior. But Velas, uh, again, we saw him on that two-point conversion, so he, he's had a couple of opportunities to shine here, more running the football than passing this afternoon. Yeah, they take advantage of his legs, and you know when you bring him in, he is the dual threat. I mean, go ahead and think, and th th look, again, I, I love what Sean McDonald's doing early in the year. I'm going to bring in the backup quarterback, and what am I going to do? Run, 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 run with him, multiple games, and then what's going to happen? Pull up, chuck one down the field, and you beat somebody on a trick play because they're overreacting to the second quarterback you're putting in the game. So I think what we're seeing here, Mike, is the beginning of the layering of their offense so that down the road, if they need to pull a rabbit out of their hat, throw both your quarterbacks on the field, and they both give you a two-way go. Prasky's punts gets a wildcat bounce and it rolls inside the 20 yard line. Well, how about Sean Goldrich though? Only a junior. He only had eight starts last week or last year. 516 yards passing from going over the uh, number 10. Well, he had 422 this afternoon. You had the tools when you got here. You've honed them with the help of an unparalleled group of educators. And you face the world with the most versatile implement of all. A 
liberal arts education from the finest school in this country. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Forty-five twenty-one, and Andy, I'm not sure if you follow that thesis as I rumbled into that uh, commercial break. Number five right there, Andy, or uh, Sean Goldrich. I mentioned the fact he's a junior. He opened the game 516 passing yards from cracking the top ten. Now, he only had eight starts last year, and uh, he had 422. How, how about consistency? 37 of 30 or 27 of 39 last week, 27 of 40 this week. Yeah, not bad completion percentage and uh, a lot of a lot of yards after the catch. Let me throw it sideways, get some good blocks, let guys like RJ Harris rip off 74 yard touchdown runs. By the way, I totally got that. I knew what road you were going down <laughs> and and just took me a while to get there. Huh? I, I, but it, it's a litany of good quarterbacks that have come through this New Hampshire program. A lot of it's to the system. A lot of it is a testament to the actual players, but great coaching here. They know who they are. And I think the teams struggle with that, Mike. What are you? We see teams willingly become one dimensional too easily nowadays. Oh, I'm down 15. Well, let me go back and start hucking it all over the lot when you got to stay within yourself. They never really panic here, does this New Hampshire squad. And because of that, they continue to get their stuff in. They continue to work play action. And they continue to put up big numbers like Goldrich has today. McHale fires it. This one's completed over the 35. Speaking of big numbers, we saw that last carry by uh, Christopher Lee, a true freshman from Lake Orion, Michigan. He's going to want some playing time down in the future because he's carried it a couple of times, and uh, he looks like he runs real hard for Lehigh. He's done a good job, and, and again, I think the big thing for Andy Cohen is he's going to find out some kids who maybe deserve the opportunity to get some reps with the big boys in practice, see how they do, see if they practice well, and then it can translate into the game. Depth is the hardest thing to develop in college football. 3.21 to go. Clock is moving. Christopher Lee again. Boy, he puts his shoulder down, gets the first down, and kind of looks like Norm Bulash out there running the old uh, Baltimore Colts. Holy cow, Norm. <laughs> how are you? You know, but, earlier in the game, I'm sorry to cut you off no. there. Earlier in the game, we talked about Spears when he caught that first touchdown pass. Yeah. He said he uh, worked out with some of these guys because uh, he's from the Lehigh area, but uh, not only Spears, uh, Cody Muller, the defensive end, uh, Shane McNeely, the linebacker, his brother Tad, Danny Riley, defensive tackle, uh, Makosha, the center, they're all from that area. Matter of fact, Coach is from Bethlehem, so they all had to wait a year, and uh, it was worth the wait, I guess, 45-21. Uh, no doubt, those bragging rights are big. I mean, when you lose the game head-to-head, -head, and the New Hampshire kids had the ability to play the card, well, we went to the national semifinals, and Lehigh was like, and we beat you. So those kids had the ability to stick it right back at them, and maybe Sean McDonald will actually smile here at the end of this game, the old crusty ball coach, but good for those kids in terms of uh, the, the jaw jack and back and forth battle at home whenever they hit this summer. And uh, this time, 
Sansone slips a tackle, gets down close to the uh, 35 to about the 36. Matt McHale's a senior from uh, Madison, New Jersey. They said during spring ball, last year, uh, Brandon Bialkowski was the quarterback, 64% completion ratio, or percentage, I should say, 2,600 yards, 18 touchdowns. He got dinged up. And in spring ball, Andy Cohen was saying that uh, Shifnisky and McHale both had their ups and they both had their downs. But it was in training camp that uh, Shifnesky really separated himself from McHale, but now McHale getting some reps here. And Mike, I also think too, that when you have two quarterbacks, oh, and it's incomplete, ends up uh, hitting the turf. When you, I, I think in the old days it was, okay, if I got a senior and a sophomore that are the same, I'm gonna go with the senior. Well, nowadays, I right. think that's kind of reversed, is that if I've got two guys that are even, let me go with the younger future. player. Let me get him some experience, because as we've seen in college football, the future is now. And for, for Nick Shefniski, the future is very bright. This is a tough game. Three offensive linemen who are relatively new. I mean, they got their first starts last week against James Madison. Now they go on the road and come here against a senior-laden defensive group for the New Hampshire Wildcats. You're going to have to go through some growing pains as a first-time starter, and it happened today. There's Lee again inside the 20, the uh, true freshman from Lake Orion, Michigan. And uh, so Lehigh on the move now with 2.17 to go, trailing 45-21. Just trying to make this one respectable. Fine tune, they're going to be 0-2 with a road trip to Yale. But again, as you mentioned, it's all about the conference season. for these. No guys. doubt, and, and you're finding which guys can give you some depth. I, I'm a believer that in any level of, of football, high school, college, pro, you better have three backs to be able to get through these grueling seasons. Lehigh might be finding their third. Boy, nice effort, and this one's going in for the touchdown. Boy, uh, Troy Pelletier, the true freshman from Deerfield, New Hampshire. That's his second. That is his second touchdown. And uh, the New Hampshire kid coming home and saying, hey, look, you, you let me get away. I'm here playing for Lehigh. Good throw by McHale, just floats it up there. Boy, what an athletic play by Pelletier. Yeah, 6'3", has good height, and he got some good hops, too, obviously. No question. Working there on uh, Khalil Bailey, a junior defensive back from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So Pandy's on for the extra points. And they bobble the snap, and it's going to be 45-27. But uh, in January, when they're looking back at this score, 45-27 uh, is a lot better than 45-14. No doubt. And, and I, I think Lehigh knows what happened in the first half. They were dominated by New Hampshire. And here's the throw from Mikhail to Pelletier. Just floats it up there. And he does a good job, good vert right there, an athletic play, and then keeps his feet to be able to get in the end zone and score the touchdown. Always good to see a senior quarterback, even a backup, get in and throw a touchdown pass. But, Mike, in terms of the way that the score isn't indicative of what really happened here. Lehigh closed it up, but right. at one point in time, middle of the third quarter, I remember uttering, Lehigh emotionally just doesn't have an answer. And you know what? They proved me wrong because after that, they get the strip, they score the touchdown, they get the pick six, and it was, wow, they showed you some life. So if you're Andy Cohen, you like the battle. Your kids kept fighting. These are the kinds of games that when they get one-sided, you learn so much about your football team that makes you a better coach. That is the face of disappointment right there. These guys don't like to lose like this. But, but they when didn't they, show any quit, right? Well, when they get home and they have the opportunity to flip on the tape, they're going to notice some kids out here busting their tail, and they're going to look at it and say, well, you know what? We know that if we need them, we can go to these guys, and they're going to give us a representative effort. Well, like John Lyons said that uh, Nick Shifniski, they had to keep him contained, and I thought New Hampshire did a great job of keeping him in the pocket when he did break outside. It wasn't for any big, big plays. Mike, I'm with you on that. They hemmed him in, and they did it by dominating at the line of scrimmage, and that might end up being a flag. I know he didn't hit him very hard, but when you take the knee, you're not supposed to make contact with the uh, returner. And uh, the officials' discretion, the better part of valor, keeping the, uh, like they kept the hankies in the pocket there. Minute 48 to go. And New Hampshire will go to one and one on the season uh, with a road game uh, coming up next week. And Lehigh will drop to 0 and 2. And uh, not only uh, is it good to get back in the win column for these Wildcats, but uh, some players with some uh, career days here today. Lighting up the scoreboard as New Hampshire can. Uh, Harold Spears with a great game. Uh, you know, I thought Owens played well. 
Uh, you had RJ Harris hitting it pretty big. So your skill guys, uh, and you mix in a great play by Andy Valis on what was a blown field goal. Your holder makes a great play, ends up getting a first down, leads to your first touchdown. So overall, I got to think Sean McDonald is going to be more happy than sad at the end of the day today. And the Jimmy uh, DeAnsanti, a career day with the yards and receptions. And Goldrich, of course, yards, attempts, tied for completions with 27, four touchdowns. Uh, that's a career day for him. And, and Harold Spears, uh, the young man who had to go back to the Lehigh area and work out with those guys over the summer, he had a career day in yards and receptions as well. Ultimate scoreboard. Not only did New Hampshire win the game, but he was fantastic today, both in the pass game and blocking. So 64 seconds to go before they put this one in the books. And you look at this uh, Lehigh. When they lost to James Madison in the open, uh, they'd won four straight openers and had a 10 game winning streak against non-league opponents. So that one stung. And then they had the opportunity here to come in here and knock off New Hampshire in the dungeon which it doesn't happen very often. No, nope, not at all, Mike. It's a tough place to come and win, and New Hampshire proved why today. Uh, they dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides early, got some big scoring plays, and uh, this was the bounce back that I think Sean McDonald was looking for. Good work coming off a of bye week. Now it's time for them to get into the teeth of their CAA season as they take on a, uh, a very touch, a tough, excuse me, Richmond Spiders team next week. That's going to do it. The final 10 seconds will run off the clock, and uh, Sean McDonald wins another one. He's six and one against Lehigh all time, but uh, they avenged the upset last year. Yep. If they were uh, if they were looking to get revenge, they definitely did so today. And now we get an appropriately timed <laughs> cannon shot from over in the corner of uh, Cowell Stadium. You know, one of the things I want to ask the, uh, uh, the highly competent SID here at uh, UNH, Mike Murphy and a friend, is where do, are they going to build like an area in the new building for those guys? Like, do they get their own little perch or whatever? Down in the end Show zone, Yeah, sure. they got to showcase them a little bit for crying out loud. They got them over here. And... Uh, I've been a part of two premature uh, firings of the cannon over the years. Of course, whenever we used to come up here at Rhode Island, they'd fire that thing off about 10 times a game. You know, we talked about what Lehigh takes from this game. What about uh, New Hampshire after getting rocked by Toledo? So many things that Coach McDonald did not like, and it seems like they've rectified all those things here today. Mike, they got back to who they are. <coughs> Excuse me. They got back to who they are. They did a very good job in the run game. I thought they got uh, the quarterback involved early, and then as soon as they started to run the ball, what did you get? Harold Spears on the delay down the sideline. R.J. Harris catching it sideways. You get a block on the outside. He ends up running for uh, turning it into a 74-yard touchdown. So Goldrich played great as well. Some of the highlights from today here. Here's Goldrich getting the ball to R.J. Harris on that in cut. Does a good job of running around some defenders. One of three touchdowns for Harris on the afternoon. Massive day for him, Mike, as you mentioned. And then here's the here's the go route to Jimmy Jean Santi and just throwing it up there. Boy, what a nice job of redirecting and body control as well to jump up and grab that touchdown. Uh, and at that point, it was all New Hampshire. They had it working. Mike, if they wanted to throw the screen, they could. Throw the go route or the fade, they could. They wanted to hit the in cuts over the middle. They get it to the tight end. Woof, boy. Great stuff out of this New Hampshire offense today. 646 total yards. Lehigh held to 314. For Andy Gresh and our entire crew, I'm Mike Leeson saying us so long from New Hampshire. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to americansportsnet.com. This has been a presentation of ASN, the American Sports Network. Our teams, our network. 45 to 27, New Hampshire. They go on and win it, and uh, what about next year, the Wildcats, or next week, rather, the Wildcats, uh, what do they take from this game? Well, I, I, it's the ability to be themselves, to come back and win, but I'll tell you what, they're going to go on the road. They're going to deal with a Richmond team that's going to give them a bit of a better battle today. They got to clean up the kick game. That's what I wanted to get to, is that the kicking game, they've got to find a way to tighten it up. You can't be ping-dinglinging around on extra points. you got to be able to knock down your field goals. 
When you can't execute the simple short snap, that is a problem. It's got to start there, then with your holder, to give your guy the ability to find out if he can kick field goals and PATs consistently. And uh, coming up next week on ASN, it all starts at 3.30 with that Nickel State game. 45 to 27 is your final score once again for Andy Gresh and our entire crew, Mike Leeson, saying so long for New Hampshire. Thanks for stopping by on the American Sports Network.